Dax and Tom McDonald's yes! propaganda <laughs> versus Steve Aoki, AJR, and Lil Yachty's pretending. Oh. What's up, you're watching Hive Mind, the most slippery show on the internet. My name is Riley Zodra, I'm my big co-host, Graydon. Is this big enough? Pretty big. <laughs> Is that better? Today we're joined by a very special guest, content creator and professional hater, Rad Taste in Music. That is me. And uh, did you tell him yet? No. Oh, the good news? What? Yeah, uh, I'm officially joining Hive Mind. Right. Oh. I, yeah. What? Yeah. I'm really? uh, yeah. becoming a permanent member, and I know what you're thinking. This place doesn't look like there's enough for three, you know, not enough room for three people. And you know what? I feel like really? we have all decided, and we completely agree. Riley, it was really nice meeting you, but. We voted you out. Oh, it's great working with you, man. Yeah. Really? Sorry I signed Brad that. to a 15 year, $632 contract. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Where'd the other zeros go, huh? You're taking me off my own show and you're paying him more than I ever got paid. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. That's insane. It's yeah. an improvement, all right? <sighs> Get ready for an hour and a half of the worst music you've ever heard. This is. Worst songs bracket two. We didn't see the first one, 64 bad songs. We took the songs that you commented the most on the first video, as well as suggestions from our Patreon. Only one song can win. Are you ready, Brad? I was made ready. This is my specialty, bad music. Mm. All right, before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. HiMindTV.com for our merch. We also have a drop over with Copes on his website. It's on the screen. It's linked in description. As well as our Patreon and our Cameo. If you'd like to support us or click the join button, become a member here on YouTube. Brad's a member. Yeah. Right, Brad? I'm a member of Hive Mind. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also, subscribe to Brad Taste in Music Please on don't YouTube. do that. No. Please subscribe. Please. No, wait till the content gets better, and then subscribe. I, I, I. So for the first round, we're going to hear a clip of each of the songs. Then we just play it out from there. Let's get into the first matchup. Come on now. Justin Bieber's Yummy versus Leviathan JPTV, Chug Jug with you. Oh, this matchup. <laughs> yeah, you got that yummy, yum, that yummy, yum, that yummy. Mm. Starting off with a hot take. This is kind of like Tusi Slide to me. Like I get why people say it's bad, but the beat just has this little groove to it. I think he's got like a pretty good melody and he delicately balances, making a song about going down on his wife that is also somehow about Pizzagate and John Podesta. Yeah, I mean, people say that, but. Well, I mean, it, like if you really listen, if you like are tapped in, yeah. if you're kind of like reading the newspapers that I'm reading, mm -hmm. yeah. reading the almanacs that I'm getting my little nose into, <laughs> you will, I mean, watch the music video a few times and you yeah. will see it is clearly about Hillary Clinton and the lizard people. I'm happy to say that I'm uneducated and I hate this song and I'm okay with that. <laughs> kind of like I, it too. Number one victory royale, yeah, Fortnite, we bout to get down. get down. Ten kills on the board right now. I mean, I I prefer this one because I think it has a good meme value and it's not sad to listen to. It's also <laughs> American Boy by, oh, this is kind of American okay. Boy versus Canadian Boy. That's the thing is, it's just an Estelle song that I love, but yeah. sung by a little child. And with Fortnite added in it, which is like a, kind of what she was missing in the original song. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I'd say I'd rather choose the man child to move on rather than the actual child. So you think Yummy's worse? Yes, significantly worse. I have to say Chug Jug with you is worse, but it's like a novel. Tea, so it's kind of tough. Yeah. I just think like if you are at a party and somebody put on Chug Jug with you, <laughs> that shit would go crazy. <laughs> I don't think so. I think no, that I would be like, yeah. that's like lean sipping music though, you know, Chug Jug for you. <laughs> Right? I guess. Um, but Yummy, it's like, what the fuck are people gonna do with Yummy on, you know? You like this one? Yeah, I guess I could do that. <laughs> Got that yummy, yummy. It's not bad. Did it work? Uh, 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 yeah, bay, yeah, bay. You're my match, get litty, bay. You're making oh, it worse. God. You're making yeah, a case I gotta for say. it. Yeah, I gotta say. All right, yeah. It's Chug Jug. Yeah, Chug Jug's better. I'm yeah. going yummy. Oh. Shout out Leviathan. <laughs> Isn't that like some sort of satanic thing? Oh, no, that's just, Leviathan? It's, it's what Levi's short for. Oh. It's like how Jonathan and John. Nice, Leviathan. Next, we got Oliver Tree's Life Goes On versus Lil Uzi Vert's CS. Life goes on and 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 on. Brad hates this one. This one, I will say, sucks. I, so thank bad. you. Oh my God. I feel crazy though. This like, is this like, was... I can't believe this wasn't made already. It's just like life goes on and on and on. It's very tolerable for me. I'm not going to say I like it, but like we were breezing through songs today before we started. And this is the one I made it like the furthest in. Most of them are like 35, 40 seconds. I'm like, all right, let's get on to the next one. This one, I was like a minute and a half in and I almost tapped my damn foot. I think that the <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I did it. I almost tapped it. I no. said, ah! This is embarrassing TikTok bait garbage. It's a testament to Oliver Tree falling off and simply just trying to go for biggest numbers. And I think that it is an absolute embarrassment. This is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Well spoken. Wake up! Grab a wrist and put a little makeup. Have to stop the pillow and shake up. Watch me the keys up on the table. <laughs> I mean, it's a cover of Chop Suey. And I think it's awesome. It's fine. I like it. Yeah, this is where, you know, Chug Jug, I can accept the novelty. I can't accept the novelty for this. I think this is genuinely one of the worst covers I've ever heard. And I think it is easily the worst thing Uzi's ever made. And <laughs> as much as I hate Life Goes On, I cannot say that that is worse than this. I think that this is just... Horrendous. Really? Yeah. That's crazy to me. I mean, like, think about how people will react to this song at their shows. Yeah. That's like, okay. like, I think like Uzi deciding to do this and put this on their album so that they can have this big moment at the shows that is just chop suey with some auto tune and yeah. reverb on it. I'm like, that's fine. I'm in the Oliver Tree camp. I think both are zeros, so I'll let you guys figure this one out. Because I personally, I think you're convincing me with the live set thing. Because I can imagine that shit going crazy live. I'd freak out doing it live, and I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think life goes on is way worse. Yeah. yeah. All right, life goes on, goes on. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Now we've got Hot Chelly Ray tonight tonight Ugh. versus Lucas Graham oh, seven yeah. years. Oh, man. oh, this is a tough one. I have a hot take. On this matchup. Okay. Okay, if you're gonna defend seven years, I swear to God. He's going to. No. <laughs> tonight, tonight, there's a party on the rooftop, top of the world. Man, imagine getting some oh, fucking brain to that song. Oh, fucking dope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're getting some fucking roadhead That's to like that a, fucking like a song. fucking sloppy top. Ooh, rock. girl, that'd be crazy <laughs> as fuck. I can just imagine getting <laughs> to that song, you know what I mean? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I hate that fucking song. Yeah, that song's real. Like, and here's the thing. I'm going to go crazy for a lot of songs that I hate yeah. during this. Like, I will dance to whatever. Yeah. I'm kind of like you at a little Uzi Vert show when yeah, CS exactly, comes on yeah. about tons of songs that I hate. If that came on in public even, I'd probably be like, Tana, yeah, Tana, oh. but it sucks so yeah. bad. For me, I don't hate it, but it's just because it's so generic and of the time and there's so many songs like it it's just like energy best spent some hating something else like seven years once i was seven years old my mama told me oh. embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> to me, this is no different than any of those kind of pop ballad songs. It's just kind of like whatever. Oh, you that's know? so wrong. No, this shit is the fakest crap ever. The story, like everything about this is total bullshit. Yeah, I don't even believe he was seven years old at one point. Yeah. I think he skipped, he skipped from six, six to eight. eight. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, fuck seven. That's the police well, number, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the police, 711. Yeah, seven. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. You give me seven beers, put on seven years. I am, I'm cooking for the night. That is nice. It's a nice vibe. <laughs> It's, I mean, this is, this. I thought it would be a hard matchup at first, but it's very clearly tonight, tonight for me. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, for me, it's seven years without a doubt. I, I just feel like everything about that song gives me icks. It feels like the most inauthentic ballad I've ever heard. It's easily my pick, but you know. It's up to you, Riley. See, I thought this was very easy going in. I was going to pick tonight, tonight, but I think I would rather hear tonight, tonight than seven years. That's kind of a good point. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of a good point because in public, whether I hate it or not, I'm kind of like, tonight, tonight. <laughs> if I hear seven years in public, I'm leaving. Plus, if you start fucking to seven years, it doesn't hit the same as tonight, tonight, you know? We didn't say anything about fucking. We said getting hit. Yeah. Very different. Oh, shit. Uh, of course. I've been yeah. edging uh, for seven years, so technically I've been <laughs> fucking for seven years. I say seven years moves on for some reason. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next, we've got Young Gravy's One Thought, Two Thought, Red, Red Thought, thought Blue, Blue Thought versus John Mayer's Your Body is a Wonderland. Oh! <laughs> Young Gravy is like the new John Mayer in a lot of ways. How so? Yeah, uh, uh, white. <laughs> Uh, hot, hot white, hot guy. white guy with hot, good hair, and then probably some bad takes on things. John yeah, Mayo, Young Gravy. Oh, there you go. It's your collab. Keep slapping. Man. There you go. One da, two da, red da, blue da. Gravy so cold, bitch. I think I need a flu shot. This is the type of song that I never say this. I never say go this. Ahead. This is the only song that makes me say this. Some people shouldn't be allowed to rap. 
Right. Like, Young Gravy should be allowed to talk and no. be hot and tall. Mm -hmm. But he shouldn't be allowed to rap. It's just not, this isn't, like, yeah. really rapping. I just get the vibe he's so pleased with himself. And that's, like, the most repulsive thing about him. And I just feel like in five years, they're going to be like, Young Gravy found under a bridge masturbating and reading <laughs> Dr. Seuss. And people are going to be like, oh, dude, I remember him. <laughs> oh. That's the worst thing he does, though, I will say. I, I, there's people have gone out a lot worse. Personally... <laughs> I think that this, <laughs> I think that this song is, uh, yeah, him just doing his lazy shtick, which I mean, yeah, he's novelty and whatnot. I've never really been a big fan of him, uh, but this song feels especially lazy. I've never laughed at a Young Gravy song. No. I know it's supposed to be funny yeah. rap, but I've never laughed. No, it's like a little too self-serious. He won't lean into the joke enough. Yeah, it's in that awkward limbo state of trying to be serious, trying to be a serious artist, but also the novelty gimmick. It's just like with Lil Dicky. Lil Dicky at ever. least like leans into the technical side where like he can rap. Gravy like never does it enough. He's like, don't take me serious as a rapper. I'm funny, but I'm fucking these bitches. And it's like, <laughs> okay, well, that's not funny. That's cool, I guess. I don't know what it is. You Beautiful song. This is a song I had to grow up to realize, like, why people didn't like it. Like, yeah. like when I first heard it when I was a kid, I was just like, oh, this sounds beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Which is how I talked as a child. <laughs> oh, then, this song is eloquent uh, and oh, beautiful. Oh, father, this song is beautiful. <laughs> but then I, like, the, listened to the lyrics as I grew up and was like, oh, yeah, this is kind of an icky. It's like, gives me a little bit of, like, the skin crawl. Yeah, I get that, yeah. Your body is wonderland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no like, one's body is an amusement park for you to play in, John. Your body is a wonderland. I got a fast pass. <laughs> yeah, no. I ride all the rides first. <laughs> I took a, took a ride upon your boobies, baby. Right. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Feel up on your booty, baby. Probably the best guitarist of our lifetime. He's a great songwriter. Sure. And his voice is pretty good. I mean, I, this song's pretty good. The Young Gravy song's actually bad. Yeah. I think that John Mayer's song has a more interesting story and is more embarrassing. And I feel like the Young Gravy song is simply more diamond dozen could pick any gravy song so for me i honestly would pick john mayer but i also am not gonna die on that hill okay it's gravy it's gravy for me <laughs> gravy. any young gravy song is worse than your body's on yeah. wonderland <laughs> next we got jake paul fresh out of london versus kenny chesney's she thinks my tractor's sexy fire one of these songs is amazing fresh out of london she still got an axe to yeah. like a palace i took her to passes if he want to feature then we whoa that was crazy <laughs> i gotta say i've never I'm just kidding. Fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lil Baby wrote it. Yeah, that's yeah, what absolutely. I was yeah. yeah. So I like don't. I don't know. Like it's kind of okay. Like it's just it's like bad because it's Jake Paul. Right. If it's just some random person I'd never heard of, and I heard this, I would just be like, oh, this is like a mediocre rap song. I will say it's probably his best rap song. Oh, it's not. Park South Freestyle is Jake Paul's best rap song. It sounds like a Drake song. Oh, I know the one you're talking about. It's kind of hard. Yeah. It's not like great, but it's like fine. He has know? charisma and a great body too. I agree. And Rolling Stone, 10 most interesting men of the year. Really? I don't know if they even do that list. I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> they do yeah. She thinks my track to sexy. It really turns her on. I mean, the instrumentation, the vocals, everything here is magnificent and from a golden era of country. But if your body is a wonderland is creepy. Some of the things Kenny <laughs> says in this song, equating a woman's body to like, let's say the gear shift. He's going to shift your gears. He's going like, to open up her throttle. Yeah, he did say that at one point. You yeah. got a primer. You yeah. Got a primer. Oh, Change your oil. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, this is disgusting in a lot <laughs> yeah. of ways, but it is that early 2000s country that really riles me up. Really turns you on. I mean, all the country songs kind of blend together for me, except yeah. for one on here that I think is the worst one. Okay. And that's not this one. Yeah. This one's just kind of like, yeah, it's creepy, like how a country song from that era is creepy. And it sounds like all of the country from that era. So it's just kind of like a whatever song. But, I think it might be worse than the Jake Paul song. I don't know. I don't, I don't care. think so. Like if Tractor Sexy comes on and I'm in a shitty dive bar, I'm kind of like, <laughs> who played this? It's kind of funny. If someone turns on Jake Paul, I'm, I'm like, cash me out. I'm going to yeah. smash a bottle over the bartender's head and then do my classic. <laughs> I'm going to kick open the ATM machine, take as much as I can, mm -hmm. and then bounce out of there. It feels like Jake Paul with Fresh Out of London just sort of cheated. Like, he sucked at writing songs, so he just had someone else write it, put it under his name, and just feels really lame to listen to. And, and at least with the She Thinks My Tractor's Sexy, it's funny bad. So I... 
kind of agree. I think that the Jake Paul song is worse. And it's 20 years later, and we're still talking about Kenny Chesney. And in 20 years, we, no one's going to be like, you remember Fresh Out of London? Right. <laughs> People yeah. are going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm in a spaceship. Don't talk to me about Jake Paul. <laughs> now we got Fall Out Boy Centuries versus Sway Lee, Tyga, and... Who else? Lil Mosey or something yes, on this? Lil Mosey. <laughs> okay. Sway Lee, Tyga, and Lil Mosey, Krabby Step. Oh, got it. This one is just the classic shrill hook arena rock song that for some reason also samples and interpolates Tom's Diner by Suzanne Vega. Oh, yeah. it's the song that does that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was, I grew up a huge Fall Out Boy fan. Of like first couple albums, you know, up to Fully I Do. I loved Fall Out Boy. And then when they came back, I was like, oh man. <laughs> oh, they're like, they're like the worst band of all time. They now. ruined it. <laughs> oh shit. They were like my favorite band. And now they're like literally the worst yep. band that exists. Exists, I have so. an interesting uh, Zoomer perspective on it because I think this was actually the first Fall Out Boy song I heard. Um, there you go. Wow, yeah, that is interesting. It's one of those songs that I feel like if you hear little segments of it or you're in a stadium and you hear this song, you're going to turn up to it. But it's one that I've tried listening to like just in my spare time and it just <laughs> makes you realize how lame the song is. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like sports champion type of like they were aiming yeah. for like ESPN. Like, remember me for centuries. Yeah, they will play it like during the MLB, what do they call them? The World Series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it almost said finals. Like the MLB finals. I don't watch a lot of baseball. The, uh, the MLB finals. When's tip off? <laughs> <laughs> what quarter is it? <laughs> is it eight? Yeah. Centuries is going to be tough to beat. This is kind of a sleeper favorite for me in the whole bracket. What the fuck is this? Wait, I didn't even hear this. What? Yeah, Krabby, Step. Krabby Step. It's for the SpongeBob movie. That is insane. That yeah. is like the worst. That is beyond. That, that is like <laughs> corporate meme, like gripping garbage. Riley loves it too. He's about to say he loves it. He's gearing up. I can see him right Oh no. <laughs> He's, I can see it in his eyes. I see the twinkle. <laughs> Listen, I love Spongebob. I know you okay. do, buddy. I idolize Sway Lee. I know you okay. do, buddy. <laughs> I look up to Tyga. When you put all those things together, boom, boom, boom. It's like the bubble bowl for me. I mean, this With shit the is. bubble bowl. <laughs> I feel like it's honestly, it's one of those things that I just attach to right away. Like before I even heard it, I decided I was going to like it. Yeah. It's just, that's what I do. You do that. I do that. Out. Sometimes I'm like, it'd be funny to like this, so I'm going to like it. You know? What about you? What do you think? I mean, Centuries is, Centuries is worse because of like the power of the song and the band. Like, Krabby Step is like... Like, you didn't hear it. Like, you hadn't even heard it. You yeah. can't avoid that song. Centuries, you have to hear if you watch TV or go outside. Yeah, and it's like you said, a formerly great band. Sway Lee is the only member of the Krabby Step band that was formerly great. <laughs> I imagine if you're, like, really into sports, then you're going to hear Centuries a lot. I'm not really into sports, so I kind of actually am in the middle with, like, I don't hear either of these songs. So for me, because I think that there's things about Centuries I like and the shock of Krabby Step was so bad, I'll pick Krabby Step, but I know it's not moving on. I gotta go with Centuries. Yep. I yeah. just think it's it's too pervasive. Now we got Dax and Tom McDonald's <laughs> yes! Propaganda <laughs> versus Steve Aoki, AJR, and Lil Yachty's Pretender. Mm. Oh god, that one's rough too. This oh, is beautiful. a this is a crazy first round matchup. Right I here. am a good pretender. <laughs> oh god. Propaganda. And all I see is propaganda. Kind of like death to PC culture. It's crazy that Tom Mac putting a death to PC culture. Wow, remarkable. That's a stretch. You said it earlier, this collab of the century. It really is, it ended racism. Ah. Actually, yeah, it's true. I was wondering why that was over. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. Yes, oh, cool. yes, yeah. we did it. This song to me is just, I don't know, you can pick any Tom McDonald song. It's never really an interesting pick. It's always just very, eh. But then he kind of teams up with Dex, who's also now doing what is like the man apology kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just, it's an absolute disaster. <laughs> I don't even think it's the worst song ever. It's just like a clash of the titans of like the worst grifters. Yeah. yeah. So. It's hot trash. I feel like they're just like such a sideshow on the internet that I kind of like roll my eyes when people are like, put this Tom McDonald song on the worst song. I'm like, all, they all, he sucks. Like, yeah. 
yeah. it's like the whole thing sucks. Who yeah, cares? Yeah, and he benefits from it always. Yeah, too. like yeah. that's like what he thrives off being on these lists. Yeah. And then having people be like, I'm 42 years old and I've never liked rap music, but what you're saying is really inspiring to me, son. <laughs> Finally, I, some truth. <laughs> I know I'm not your target audience because I don't usually listen to rap, but this one really spoke to me, Tom. Yeah. It's like, yeah, because you're racist <laughs> and you heard a racist guy rap. If anyone's <laughs> watching at home, which I assume you are, go to any Tom McDonald song on TikTok and scroll through it's it's amazing the the tiktoks you'll see i mean it is all like old men who just like the only information they've seen is like info wars yeah it's a great rabbit hole yeah it is. <laughs> behind the scenes though i'm insecure i'm insecure i think i like <laughs> When Yachty goes, uh, they okay? Yeah. <laughs> AJR and Lil Yachty singing on the same song just like never thought that would happen. I'm glad it did though. I'm not. It's like the unlikely collab. They were probably never in the same room together and they were like, you know what? Let's make a song about positivity and how we're all kind of liars. Yeah. It's like, well, I think it's funny that AJR is singing a hook about being like, I'm not actually cool. I'm just a good person. Like nobody thought AJR was yeah, cool. True. Nobody oh. was like, oh, those guys are so fucking cool. Yeah. How are they so fucking cool? cool and they're like listen guys we're not actually that cool we're just good pretenders we're just like you i think it's really funny that ajr happens to collab with steve aoki which i mean he made literally like the worst black parade remix <laughs> that the world has ever seen and it's just like been clowned on since then for me i feel like this song is just a hilarious amalgamation of the worst of everybody it's got one of the worst yachty features horrible production and ajr again just kind of bringing a very embarrassing performance yeah i think i made this mistake in the first bracket i would pick the song that I want to talk about more yeah, instead of the one fair. that's actually where like propaganda if you made me worse. sit through either of these songs I would hate to sit through propaganda versus Steve Aoki's Pretender I feel the opposite I feel like there's a numbness listening to propaganda I would choose Steve Aoki for again the reason of I just genuinely don't want propaganda to move on because it's just designed to hate bait oh it's hate bait I like that <laughs> it's catchy hate bait that's why they pay me the big bucks <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with Pretender too. oh thank god now we got 100 Gex Money Machine versus Magic's Rude. 100 Gex Money Machine, by the way, was the most commented and most requested song to be in <laughs> Worst Songs Bracket 2. Oh, that's actually my alarm to take my dogs out. Oh, he's taking his shoes off. I get it. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. taking his dogs take, out. Take out the dogs. <laughs> Gotta yeah. lock the dogs. Pop those puppies out, I guess. This is incredible. It's to take your dogs out. Why did it say birth control? <laughs> But yeah, uh, Money Machines requested so much we had to put it in. Yeah. That's really all that it is. And it's a great song, and Rude is a vibe. <laughs> it is. I'm sorry. Let's listen to him. <laughs> I love this song. One thing I will say, it did do irrevocable damage by including that intro part where it says piss baby. Yeah. Because now people just call themselves, oh, I'm a piss baby. Stop. I mean, your arms look like little cigarettes. I'm a piss baby. Shut up. It doesn't mean anything. The rest of the song is great though. And like actually changed shit up and is a banger and blah, blah, blah. I saw a clip of someone going to a 100X concert and they just asked a ram random person what your favorite YouTube poop was. And they immediately fucking knew the answer. And I feel like that kind of explains the audience. <laughs> Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This isn't worst audiences bracket. No. <laughs> you know, those, oh no, those are yeah. my those are my people. I'm not <laughs> fuck with this. I, 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 like, here's the thing: is like this song is. You know, what? I'm just gonna put it simply like this. Uh, people will eventually catch up. God, I when I remembered this song and we said we were gonna put it in, in my head, the song was very bad. And then when we listened to it, I was like, steel drums, like it's kind of crazy. It's, it's kind of like, like, it's kind of got like, it's got a couple hooks. It's like not bad. Yeah, like you're at someone else's family cookout and this song plays and you're like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Your family's pretty chill. I like this. Your uncle's fucking weird, but this is cool. <laughs> and dude, you killed it on the beanbags earlier. <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, wait, who are you? Ah, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm the beer rep. <laughs> I like Rude more as a song. I I don't. I guess I'm the tiebreaker, so let me give you uh, <clears throat> my long essay on this, all right? Okay. Yeah. Rude is better white boy reggae than 21 Pilots, and as a result, I don't hate it, but it's 100 gex. Okay. 100 gex is- Better. Better. So, yeah. so Rude, Rude moves, moves on. Yes. It is like a mental gymnastics are crazy, yeah. I know. How has 21 Pilots escaped being on this bracket twice? Oh wait, yeah. They're not on the this fuck? one. Because they're good? 
No, they're from there because they're from Ohio. Now we've got a very special matchup between Eminem's Fack and William Shatner's Ponder the Mystery. I think Fack can win this. I am a firm believer that it could win this bracket. Oh my God, I want a fucking Fack. No, not fuck. I said Fack. Song doesn't get better, by the way. <laughs> no, that's one of the more tolerable parts of that song. Yeah, and the fact that it was actually like it was only released on the greatest hits album. That was the like the first track on the greatest <laughs> hits. That is what he did for it, and it is just truly insulting. In that way, it's almost cool. Like it's like yeah. such he's such a troll. Yeah, like back then he actually was like a real troll. Yeah, now he's like a bitter version of like <laughs> what he's looking at his old self and being like, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You guys don't like it. This was like such a shit post before shit posts were shit posts. Yeah. And so that I can respect about it. It is like also the most horrific thing to listen to. Yeah, yeah it's bad and then it gets worse and then there's gerbils involved and I'm like, yeah, you know what? If you want to hear a good song that's like this, uh, there's no cock like horse cock. It's a banger. Who's that by? I don't know, a guy who likes horse cock. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry, that could be anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely isn't my ex-wife. <laughs> and the tension of victory. <laughs> There's something awesome about his music that I'm, I mean it. <laughs> yeah. It's like what I would expect Neil deGrasse Tyson to do if he yeah. made music. Like, it's just kind of like about whatever. Yeah, or if like <laughs> Leonard Cohen was a scientist, <laughs> yeah. you know? The music videos are really what make it. Yeah. It's like an episode of Cosmos but yeah. with William Shatner walking through it. So I think that there is a much worse version of this, which is the Iced Earth narrative landscape, or yeah, soundscape it was called. And what it is is basically this, except for the vocals are about 10 times louder. Louder? and all about like the devil yeah it's bad but I think that William Shatner you know he's old and doing his thing whatever at least he didn't go to Trump rallies like the Ice Cube shit did so Ice Cube Ice damn it why Iced Earth not Ice Cube <laughs> yeah Ice Cube I don't think went to Trump rallies no Iced Earth did go to the January 6th yeah uh Festival? What are we calling it? I just call it like a hangout, kind of oh. a kickback. <laughs> a kickback. The, the, the barbecue. Kickback. I mean, it's not a party unless one person dies, you know? Yeah. It's fact really easily here. Yeah, it's fact. I can't believe that we're going to get these two back to back because the next matchup is Joe Pesci's Wise Guy versus Stitch's Molly Cyrus. Molly Cyrus. <laughs> just like going from William Shatner's music career to then Joe Pesci's <laughs> right away is so funny to me. It's beautiful. Joe Pesci is like a talented vocalist who actually actually does some jazz standards, but at one point in the height of his career, he made a rap song. I told you before, I don't drive by. I'm a wise guy. I just stop by. Two supermodels, both of my arms. <laughs> Lackluster delivery as a rapper, mm -hmm. but I believe him. Yeah. <laughs> like all this shit, like that's the thing. It's weird, but I believe, there's something about how like, <laughs> He doesn't seem affected by anything. He's like so cool on it. Yeah. That I believe all the shit that he says about like having threesomes and killing people. He says <laughs> a beautiful day for a drive by. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's a real gangster in this. Yeah, he's a great actor. This song's grown on me a lot though. I'm kind of charmed by it every time I hear it. Yeah, like I, I get why people think it's bad, but the more I listen to it, I'm kind of like, all right. I'm a wise guy. I think for me, it's so embarrassing because like it's an interpolation of what is it, the Mr. Rogers theme mm -hmm. with the neighborhood thing it's like I mean that's terrible with him like rapping and it also sounds like a Blondie song like Blondie <laughs> Rapture with that it's like it's just an abomination and you only heard like a small clip this song gets so much worse it's like four and a half minutes yeah long. it's oh, yeah. insane yeah. fuck Miley Cyrus I'ma put cocaine in your ass I'ma put my dick in your ass oh so it actually is Molly Cyrus oh yeah yeah oh that shit goes it's crunk it's crunk as fuck. Yeah. It's crunk as fuck, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to fuck Molly Cyrus. <laughs> I'm gonna put cocaine in your ass. I'm gonna put my dick in your ass. I'm trying to fuck Molly Cyrus. <laughs> I love it. I think that's something that if you actually put on in a party, people would like squint for a second and then start going fucking psycho to it. I think it's worse than Wise Guy though. Yeah, I don't. I think like viscerally the Stitches song is worse. If this wasn't Joe Pesci, it'd just be some random guy's yeah. song. But song for song, I think Molly Cyrus is worse, but that's also what makes it good. I'd love to see the footage of him in a studio. I'm gonna put cocaine in your ass. <laughs> I'm gonna put my dick in your ass. Was that good? Yeah, was that good? <laughs> yeah. Let me get another. Ah, that one's a little yeah. off. Little, yeah, it was a little harsh. I feel that. I feel that. Okay. <laughs> Say it like you mean it, Stitches. Come on, no, I stitch. got it. I got it. We should just wrap up for the day. It's been a lot. No, I got this. I can do this. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Molly Cyrus. Me I'm... too. Sorry, Brad. <laughs> no, I mean, that's fine. It's not gonna make it past FAC, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe it will. You have to stay and watch and hit like and subscribe to Hive Mind and to 
Brad Taste in Music because soon I will be converting my channel into ripping off Hive Mind's content if you do like it. Correct. Now we got Smash Mouth's All Star versus Bo Burnham's Bezos. Weird matchup. Weird matchup, I will <laughs> say. Hey now, you're a rock star. Get the show on, get paid. I'll say it, good song. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing bad about this song really to me. No, when I was, I think I was in junior year of college when this song came out. Yeah. I was messing around with it. You were into all that shit, man. All yeah. like Smash Mouth, fucking Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah. Papa Roach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big yeah. Papa Roach guy. Uh-huh. I mean, it was just like good times, kind of like, but like not offensive. Smash Mouth to me is, I mean, it it kind of serves almost as like a perfect song for like what it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with the whole Shrek thing and the memes, I feel like it's only here because of the oversaturation, but not because it's bad. I think also it does have the whole like finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead, which is like, that is pioneering because this is before the Fortnite dance. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Born in 1964, Jeffrey. I heard this was actually uh, originally supposed to be a bonus track on uh, Dawn FM by the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like Bo Burnham is like, he's in that interesting space where like, yeah, he's corny and I get it. He's also kind of like a genius or whatever. Like, I'm not saying that for myself. I'm saying like, that's what he's going for. Sure. That's what makes me hate him the most. I think that's what it is. It's just like, like he'll sit on a panel and talk about what makes him funny and smart. And the type of people that like this special and these songs were like the same type of people that loved Hamilton. And I don't know, it's just, I hate him. It's just on the surface satire that he's taken so seriously and thinks it's so smart. So I actually have an interesting take because I, I completely disagree because okay. I'm, I actually agree with a lot of things except for I think the inside special is actually an interesting experiment. Just like everything Bo Burnham does, like it could be an interesting idea, but the way people run with it, it, it yeah. becomes like the moon landing for annoying people whenever he puts out something. <laughs> my feelings towards Bo Burnham are the exact same as like my feelings towards Hassan Piker. Mm. He'll get it right. Bo Burnham will get it right, but I'll still hate him for it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Still will find him to be very annoying. I mean, it's definitely, Bezos is definitely worse than yes. All Star by Smash Mouth, though. Never liked it. Only thing Bo ever did that I liked was his co starring in Promising Young Woman. The only thing Bo Burnham ever did that I liked was Phoebe Bridgers. Now we got <laughs> Cotton Eye Joe versus Jump by J Pro. Okay. This is a crazy a matchup that it's like it feels forbidden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's cursed. <laughs> <laughs> What fucking lab was this made in? Like Sweden. <laughs> They're like Nordic. <laughs> it's like some fucking barnyard electro. What the fuck happened with you this should, song? You should look up the um cover to this, actually. Like, it'll be worth it. Trust me. Their faces are like in a bowl of soup, and it's it's all like six of them, and then someone's pissing in it. You see their boots next to it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like once you see that it's subversive, it kind of makes it cooler. But like, as just like, I grew up hearing this in school dances. Every school and dance. fucking, you know, our country friends would play it out at their barns and shit and I thought of it as just like a true blue square dancing song yeah and then I grew up and was like wait a minute this is like electro in some way it's strange like yeah. what is this song I think it's awesome name another song like it I was gonna say it's it's one of a kind I don't enjoy the song but I also I completely agree I, they're literally I don't think there's another song exactly like it oh no it, it's, it's annoying though same time if you start moving to it it's hard to stop I rinse it and repeat my rocky cuts scene started 2016 thank you god i think if this song existed in a vacuum without anything else about j pro being out there i think it's fire Wait, what's up with j pro well no no no. it's just more so like this existed at a time where like over enunciation in rap was already happening you know it started with like Kasher kwan was over enunciating and then since 99 happened and there's all these other examples of it and this was like the cleanest possible version of it there is a little bounce to it all the lyrics are super clean blah blah blah, blah. but then like of course if you listen to what the way j pro talks about it he's like we need clean rap yeah rap is all about the uh, cars oh, and no. women and blah 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 like that's the way he was providing some sort of tonic for oh, everybody no. and I was like no 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 you don't get to do that no you have to be isn't a little... that literally whitewashing like just totally yeah yeah, that's... yeah that's what I'm saying is like it left a bad taste in my mouth but to this day Porsche 911 like a tangerine dream <laughs> <laughs> there's something about his voice that I do like but I think it's a worse song than Cotton Eye Joe really no not even close to me I think it's biggest crime is it's born in ignorance where I think that Cotton 
Night Joe is like an intentional disaster piece. <laughs> For that reason, I feel like I like the J-Pro more just because there is something just charming about it. Uh, so for me, I'd pick Cotton Eye Joe. Cotton Eye Joe, like you have to almost give it its props for being an annoying amalgamation of those things. Like yeah. it deserves to move on in a bracket like this as like a tip of the cap. Like, Fair wow, enough. you made this fucking <laughs> yeah, weird yeah. earworm <laughs> barnyard hoedown song. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Avril Lavigne's Hello Kitty versus Penelope Scott's Rat. These are oddly both bad songs. It's, not, it's actually not even odd. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's the it's, worst song. Yeah, we're yeah. 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 But they're bad for interesting reasons. Let's hear a little Avril Lavigne, am I right? Right. More like Adam Lavigne. <laughs> <laughs> One of the the truly offensive songs. Yeah, on like I don't, I didn't know about this by the way until Knew people commented on the worst song. I had never heard it, never seen the video, and was like, oh my god, she sure took a detour in yeah. 2014. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe she did this. I feel like an executive was like, Avril, let me introduce you to a whole new market. <laughs> let me tell you something a little about a place called Japan. <laughs> and she was like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ever heard of anime, Avril? <laughs> She's like, no, but I'll read up on it. Don't even have to. It's not manga. Just watch it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even, don't, don't even watch it. We're just going to write it for you. I mean, this is something that's still going on where there's a lot of like Asian hate and just like casual Asian racism. And I feel like this is just a really interesting blemish where I, I don't understand how this was ever a thing or ever acceptable. 2013. This is like they thought they could hit this market. It's more uh, exploited, exploitative. Yeah, it's kind of like a Scarlett Johansson kind of situation. I see that, yeah. Where they're like, Scarlett, do you think you can play an Asian lady? And she's like, of course I can. <laughs> I'm Scarlett Actually, Johansson. I'm going to do it for 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> Any Asian role, I'll give that to me. I think it should also be mentioned that dubstep. Oh, yeah. my God. If you ever thought, well, it's respectful. The dubstep makes it go, oh, no, it's just trendy. Yeah. 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 Okay. I loved you. I loved you. I loved you. It's true. I wanted to be you and do what you do. I had an interesting arc with this song. So it got requested a bunch to be in this bracket and I went and listened to it and was like, okay, I get, I guess like, you know, it's like cringy or whatever. And then I realized after I listened to it a few more times, I was like, oh, this is the song, the Elon love song. Like this is supposedly supposed to be written from the perspective of somebody who's in love with Elon Musk. Really? And that's like what blew it up. And so that's what this is about. That's why it's like, you lured yeah. me in with rockets and a picture of the stars or whatever. It feels very like liberal arts school in upstate New York, like social commentary of some kind. Yeah. And it's definitely supposed to be left leaning, but it just comes off very cringy. Yeah, I mean, the palette is like something I'd like usually. If I hear like some weird analog synth outsider kind of music from the 80s or 90s or something, I like like it, but then this is pumped full of like cringy modern language in general, and yeah. it just makes it, it's like too self aware and like being too cheeky. Yeah, and like the niche thing I'll say is like it's kind of sounds like a Rilo Kylie song sure. mixed with like the band Crying, yeah, which are both like bands that I love, but then it's like just what's about, yeah, is, is weird. And you love it, <laughs> <laughs> that's your whole take. Okay. I'd say for the palette of Penelope being more tolerable for me and like nothing about the Avril Lavigne song is redeemable. Oh yeah, I hate the Avril song way more. Yeah. I could see Penelope having a kind of an interesting career. I don't know what the fuck's going on with Penelope Scott, but let's be honest, I had no shot. Um, can I give you like a, a slight roast with something that I just ob observed about you? Yeah. This shirt kind of looks like when a tattoo artist who's been wearing like all black their entire life, leather jackets, whatever, gets a little older, they start wearing <laughs> shirts like this. <laughs> A tattoo and they're tucked they're tucked in though and they've yeah. still got like a neck tattoo and like see, you know yeah. painted nails and stuff but they're wearing shirts like that interesting yeah it's kind of like a 40 year old tattoo artist shirt you know most people just tell me the shirt's nice yeah i like it yeah. thank you no yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you do look like a big piece of shit <laughs> that has nothing to do with the shirt it has everything to do with kind of the aura you give off but the shirt is nice yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next one is Falling in Reverse. Shout out Ronnie Radke, Game Over versus Van Morrison, No More Lockdown. Ah, uh, this is a fantastic match. It really is. All right, Jamie, hit it. Trying hard to save the girl. Obstacles, I'm jumping hurdles. I'm growing up to be a big boy. What? 
What's what's going on here? You guys know the lead, like who's Ronnie Radke? What's the story here? I'll give you the story as an older person who was into emo music. Uh, lead singer of Escape the Fate. I liked one song by Escape the Fate sure. when I was a kid. The one that's like sitting in your room playing Russian roulette, whatever okay. that song. And then lots of legal trouble along the way and Whoa. blah 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 in jail. I'm pretty sure Falling in Reverse formed while Ronnie Radke was in jail in Vegas. Kind of fire. <laughs> and then made some of the most like overblown, ridiculous, like corny music ever. Love it. This one is the worst one I've ever heard. It is. <laughs> I have an interesting perspective. One, I've reviewed this entire album, and two, uh, Ronnie Radke is literally my bitch. Uh, and, oh. he, and he constantly messages me on uh, on Twitter. I won't say what he says, but basically, uh, he's a giant man-child. Well, he's growing up to be a big boy. Yeah, so. hopefully, eventually. But I mean, <laughs> even though this came out like 11 years ago, you wouldn't know. Uh, his music has <laughs> just continued to suck ass. But this is... <laughs> This is somehow his worst, regardless. I mean, this song is, I feel like a spectacle, and I'm glad that it's become a giant <laughs> meme because it will allow him to never live it down. Why does it stick so much to the theme? It's like all about video. Like, yeah. It's like video yeah. game stuff the whole time. It's, it's really bad. weird. No more lockdown. No more fascist police. Hey. If you ignore the lyrics, Van Morrison still got his dude can sing. <laughs> it's awesome. Classy little Why piano thing. Why would you want to ignore the lyrics? Yeah, true. Well, I, real I, shit. Real shit, real Our shit, Our God-given rights. Our God-given rights to not wear a mask and go outside. And... He just wants to go to the local bar, hit on cougars like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah. Who are cougars to Van Morrison? He's like 70. They're probably ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> In my opinion, No More Lockdown is one of many songs of old people really showing their true colors during the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing all that special about it. It's just really hard to listen to. It's no game over. Yeah, it's no game over. Game yeah. over walks. And then we've got uh, <laughs> We Will Rock You by Queen versus No Condom by DaBaby. <laughs> Queen versus DaBaby? Oh. I mean, where else can you get stuff like this? Is this like the darkest fucking joke Grant's ever made too, by the way? Why? How did Freddie Mercury die? No! Oh. Silly coincidence, or is this the oh. darkest fucking joke Grant's ever made in his life? No way. Because if it is, kudos to you being a sick, sick bastard. Honestly, borderline genius. I mean, yeah, that's like, it's borderline that's genius. That's shit I could never even think no. of. No, I wouldn't fuck. want to. I wouldn't want to either, no. but I'm glad he did. Me too. It's a it really, feels subversive. It's demented, dude. It honestly <laughs> feels, it feels brave. It feels yeah. like we've crossed over into like a new realm. He's twiddling his thumbs and petting a Persian cat right now, too, <laughs> and that's fucking awesome. Oh, Where did he get that fur coat? I don't know, dude, but he is badass today. Wait, what the hell? He's wearing a crown? And he's smoking a pipe now, too. Sing it. We will, we will rock you. I think it's just like young kids that are like stupid or something that think this song's bad because this song's fucking sweet. Um, here's what I wrote about it. Sure. I'll read it to you. <laughs> when I was listening to it last night, this is what I thought. We Will Rock You is iconic, but as the years go on, the pace is annoying and it's so novelty. The guitar solo is hard, though. That's what I wrote. You had to write that down. <laughs> I wrote down something for all of them, yeah. so like that's what I wrote. It didn't exist yet, so like a song right. going doom, doom, ka, doom, doom, ka, that obviously. Right, it's the Seven Nation Army of the 80s or 70s yeah. or whatever. It's more like the boots and cuts and boots and cuts of the fucking rock age. Yeah, yeah it gave us Till I Collapse, and Thank for that, you. I have to tip my cap, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I love the verse, too. That you're a young man, dun, 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 dun. kicking your can all over the place. Be a big man someday, you got. I mean, that's fire. I think it's one of the worst songs uh, that Queen has ever made, and one of my least favorite rock songs, period. Still, I be fucking on her with no condom. Oh, no. That's how she told me she wanted. Let's go! So, there's an interesting uh, bit of lore with this song specifically. You know, DaBaby, he was shutting down the whole crowd and rolling loud, and he gave the whole. A homophobic rant specifically he tried defending it by saying that he wasn't talking about he was like oh, if you you know if you don't have aids or anything you know put a light cell phone in the air he's like oh no no it had nothing to do there's no homophobic comments and then he releases no condom yeah it's like the biggest like yeah right ever so this song represents a lot of bad and it sucks yeah, yeah totally. and it sucks. It's way worse than Queen. By a mile. All right, last one on the first side we've got. I Love Friday's Mia Khalifa. Oh, Jesus Christ. Versus Midnight Oil's Beds Are Burning. <laughs> so girl, go do your job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mia Khalifa. 
microtonal rap. I looked up, I Googled, is this song supposed to be serious? Yeah. Like I thought, like, is this a parody? Like I didn't, and I, I realized, I guess this is like a song. Like It's for sure real. Yeah, like it's, I thought maybe like Andy Samberg had something sure, to do with yeah. it or whatever. Some sort of jokester. Yeah, somebody was playing a joke or something, <laughs> but I guess not. I had never heard it until we were doing that, and I, I am, I was flabbergasted. Yeah, it makes me a little queasy. It's like, oh. <laughs> What are you looking at me for, huh? You know, it seems like, like this is like right down your alley. You <laughs> yeah. definitely have some information. No, you're absolutely about this song. right. Uh, so this song blew up on TikTok, um, specifically the hit or miss. I guess he doesn't miss, huh? The whole thing is a diss track to Mia Khalifa, and uh, yeah, it sounds like some garbage for kids that isn't made for kids. Uh, in other words, uh, yeah, it's trendy. I don't like it. My dad showed me this song when I was a kid. <laughs> And he was like, a lot of people hate this song. I like it. I don't know, like I understand how it can be kind of annoying. The voice is a little strange, especially during some of the verses. I think it's really dull. And I think I'd actually choose uh, the fucking Mia Khalifa just because I think that that's at least entertaining. I, I find the Midnight Oil song to just sound ridiculously boring. And then the bad vocals just sound weird to me. I'm, I don't know, I don't fuck with it. You heard it here first. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely pick Mia Khalifa me here. Too, yeah, me too, yeah, yeah. So sorry, Brad. How can we sleep while our beds are burning? burning? I'm anti anybody who's anti sex work. You know what I mean? Second side, first matchup we've got Thunder by Imagine Dragons versus Swagger Jagger by Cher Lloyd. I never heard of Swagger Jagger until today, and I gotta say, you guys who don't know what this is, you're gonna absolutely love it. I was lightning before the thunder. Thunder, thunder, thunder. When we put Radioactive in the first worst songs bracket, a lot of comments were, how did you put Radioactive instead of Thunder, which is obviously the worst Imagine Dragons song. And then I was like listening to just their most famous songs and like their top five all could be on any of the, like, like yeah. Believer is so annoying. The other one, the one with J.I.D. is super annoying. Yes, yeah. And then so is the, uh, the Bones. Oh, that's the worst one to me. I mean, yeah, but this one, it's very annoying. It's a stupid little hook, like. Thunder. Blah. Yeah, it's like, it's like, this with your hands. Yeah. Like, it's like, that's I think not, this song is it. significantly worse than just a small little hook. I think that every single thing about this song is bad. I think that the moment <laughs> it starts, it kicks in, just a young gun, and it's giving literally the worst verse directly into this hook that is these awful vocals. It has the worst bridge you will ever hear in your entire <laughs> life. Every single section of this song, I think, is like a true abomination, and for me, this could easily win the entire bracket. Swagger Jagger, you should get some of your own. What does this interpolate? I think it's uh, the Flight of the Valkyries. Either way, it really just shows how in 2012, people could just kind of like parody rap, put it out as like a dubstep rap crossover song, yeah. and it would have the same shot as any other song to be on the radio. Mm -hmm. Like this is straight up offensive. Yeah. <laughs> like so much of it is so offensive. Just using rap culture as like some sort of like joke. It's like Miley Cyrus bangers times a million. Yeah, you know? that's why it's yeah. my vote for worse here. I mean, I'll make an argument that might, you know, change a guy's opinion. Cause I think that the only part of this song that's really truly offensive, well, I guess the lyrics are pretty bad with swagger jagger, but once it gets past that horrible refrain, I think the song just becomes very forgettable. Yeah. I think it's only that initial shock, whereas Sitting Through Thunder is truly a torturous experience where your jaw will just continuously go further down. I think that it's Imagine Dragons Thunder without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could use kind of like, it's like the centuries argument. It's like, you can avoid swagger jagger all yeah. you want. You, you have can't. to hear Thunder. You yeah. just have to hear That's it. It's a great point. Yeah, I I, I can, I, I think we give, uh, we give like a golden ticket sort of situation to Brad on this one. Yeah. I say we go Thunder it yeah. is the more prominent, really bad song. Yeah. Now we got Jacob Sartorius's sweatshirt versus Mumford and Sons' I Will Wait. Then you can wear my sweatshirt. Yeah. Was this before or after Chainsmokers? That's a great question, because it does have very much a Chainsmokers palette. It's cute, though. It's so adorable. It's ah. disgusting. I hate it. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I don't know. I just, there's something kind of sweet about it. I would it. wear the sweatshirt. You know how there's cute aggression where something's so cute, you want to, like, Kill it. Destroy it. Yeah, this is. <laughs> you're like Lenny from uh, Of Mice and Men. Oh, God, you're right. You're like Lenny from the Cole Bennett Lyrical Lemonade videos. What? 
The little stick figure he hides in all the music videos is like one of the best cartoons made of all time. He's like a Gumby-ish type of character. So a little bit like Gumby. I've literally never heard Gumby of Gumby was Lenny. anti-drugs. L- Lyrical Lemonade. Lenny. Wait, wait a second. You said what? Gumby, Gumby was anti-drugs, so I don't really fuck with Gumby. All right, we'll move, <laughs> we'll move Gumby on then, yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought we were doing a different bracket. <laughs> Shit. All right, recalibrating. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd never heard this song before, and I feel like maybe if like I heard it when it came out, I would have been like had like some sort of context for it. But to me, I listened to it and was like, oh, it's kind of sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I think that Jacob Sartorius is actually not the problem here. I, I think it's actually everyone working around him to make the most disgusting, bubbly, child-friendly possible song. Yeah. It sounds like bubble gum. I think that like the kid's good, you know. But... The kid's got damn. <laughs> the kid's good. Yeah. The kid's good. I say we good sign kid. Him. Let's get a good team around them. I think we could. <laughs> Pump up some real music. Make him edgier. Someone get him hooked on cocaine. <laughs> get Travis Barker on that shit, all right? Give him the hoodie treatment. Oh, who could he date? Come on, who could he date? Let's spitball. Let's spitball. Emma Chamberlain, she's taken. Yeah, nice try. All right, who, who's got next? Noah Cyrus? Engaged. Not gonna work. What about Dakota Fanning? She's 30 now? What the fuck? I am getting too old for this goddamn shit. I'm getting too old. Let's change his last name. Sartorius is too hard to pronounce. We can't say it. Let's do, uh... Banks, <laughs> Jacob Banks. I, will wait, I, will wait for you. I mean, any like I just feel like Mumford and Sons just had to be here, and this is just the one that kind of like stuck out. But yeah, I mean, they're British guys doing Americana. Wait, they're British? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Love them on in the next round. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. And Marcus Mumford dresses like Shrek. The guitarist plays the kick drum. They all live in mansions and they take photo shoots in like canoes. You yeah, know what I, mean? I hate like, it. But it looks like they have to be in the canoe, not like they're doing it for fun. Yeah, I hate you it. know, I hate that. I hate the idea of the gimmick. And again, I'll use another metric that we've been using here. Sure. The people you meet in this world that love Mumford and Sons, you could you could just wring them out. You yeah, know what I mean? Like a wet them. towel. Yeah, totally. I do not endorse that. That's behavior. death. I'm talking about I, death and killing. You know, everybody is allowed to like what they like. You no. Know, music is a beautiful thing that we can all share and not cherish. That music. And everybody should be loved and respected for what they not like and appreciate. Is that you good? Some Look, don't oh, sorry. It. I thought you wanted love. I thought you were like getting snuggled. I thought you were falling asleep on me because nah. what I was saying was so calming and inspirational. Kind of two is the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're going Mumford and Sons here. I, I, what? I mean, I think that the Jacob Sartorius just sounds more corporate and disgusting. Yeah, I think that the Sartorius song is just too new to me. I'm not done loving it yet. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a book I can't yeah, put yeah. down. Yeah, you know I mean? That's <laughs> it brought me back to a simpler time. It also made me feel like I could do it. Give like I could sweater? be, yeah. Oh no no no! Like, like the song. You'd be a like, prodigy. Like or a product, like sold, bu- yeah. sold by big, <laughs> huge corporate labels. Like if they just made me the face of it, you know. I know I'm older and I'm probably not as cute to the, a lot of people, but again, that's subjective as well. I don't know. Sl- give me one of these songs. Give me one of these cutesy songs. Yeah. Something about hot cocoa or something. <laughs> I'll sing it. You gotta auto tune me. I'm not that good. Of course, <laughs> but I think I could. I could pull it off. And I could date Dakota Fanning. That's yeah. like a fair. I don't know if she's single or interested, but I'm just saying, like age wise, it would make. It more would sense. work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what does the fox say? Whatever that. Ah! Know, Elvis, whoever made it, and Colleen Ballinger's toxic gossip train. Fuck Colleen. Yeah. Well, fuck everyone who supports her. Let's go. All right. I'm willing to take down anybody. Tell him, Brad. And you know what? These two. They say they're gonna come down with me. If I go down, they're coming down too. Who out there is defending Colleen Ballinger? Who is Hulk like, Hogan? Really? Yeah. Hulk oh, really? Hogan. Hulk Hogan loves people. He's big. I, I might know. Not go <laughs> That's down what I'm saying. What the fuck? He's a big, yeah. strong guy. I'm a little scared of him, so yeah. I might actually. Yeah. Have to, but if there's uh, three of us, I'm on the. Fa- I'm just gonna know, go I'm, ahead and you know. I'm gonna yeah. I, I'm gonna I, I gotta say, I. Uh, you know what? Maybe he's old. Maybe we take away his sleeping pills or something and get the advantage. Ah. You give me sleeping pills, I'm gonna bow out of the whole thing. I'm just gonna go chill with those. I think. What does the fox say? No one's moving. You guys will like dance to anything of this shit. It's cold in this that room right is, now. Huh? That's a tough one. Cause like, it's like it's supposed to be a song for kids, but it's also, it seems like it's made to be bad, right? Like it's not. Yeah. This isn't the P. Diddy commercial too, right? Yeah. P. Diddy produced this song. Wait, what? I don't know if he actually did, but in the Pepsi commercial oh, or whatever okay. it is he does. That's terrible. Personally, this song, the hatred that I feel for it is, uh, is a raging fire inside of me that has not gone out since it was released and it would play at like fucking middle school dances or whatever. Yeah. The hell. Yeah, I hate it. I, I hate everything like it about either. it. It poses an interesting question, though. What does the fox well, say? Well, it, it says ring ding ding. question ding. who gives a fox? Oh. I like Fox News, though. What does the fox say? Minorities are stealing your jobs. Yeah. That's what the fox that's what, says. That's what the fox says. Yeah. yeah. They rigged the election. Now, imagine for a second a talking fox. <laughs> Toxic gossip train, steamroll over someone's reputation. 
reputation. Let me just say this. If either of you are gonna sit up here and say that is a worse song than The Fox. Song. I understand <laughs> yeah. the implication. Okay, yeah, totally. I yeah. get it. Yeah. It's pathetic, it's disgusting. And it's catchy though. It's fucking catchy. It's, and it's as a song, it's good. Okay, well, I would good, good is a strong word, but it's it's <laughs> more than it's good or bad. Yeah, or bad. it's innovative. Innovative. Yeah, and here's why: it's bar lowering, but it's when not is, innovative. When is the last time you got in an argument with a friend? Something happened. You you think your friend did something bad, and they're like, "Listen, I want to address the stuff that has been going on between us." And they pulled out a ukulele. Right. Who in their right mind gets accused of something and pulls out a ukulele? Yeah. It honestly. <laughs> Changed the connotation of the ukulele forever. Yeah. <laughs> the ukulele stock market, I think, was already low once 21 Pilots picked it yeah. up and ruined totally, it. Totally. But then I feel like Colleen is like the start of the Great Depression. Yeah. <laughs> the ukulele guy, yeah. the ukulele tycoons are like, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think that the What Does the Fox Say is more of a, I guess, wide song, like, phenomenon. Yeah. And I just think that that, for me personally, is just everything about that just comes off as really weird and I don't like it. As a song, the, the Fox is way worse. Yeah. But fuck Colleen. Miranda sings, wish she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> wish it was her swan song, you know what I mean? I think it, it is, for sure. She's done. We'll see about that. She's done. She's so. gonna get championed by the right. That's what happens. She's not gonna get championed by the right. She mailed bra and panties to 14 year olds. If you're getting canceled, the right will save you. They'll say, they tried to get you. What you did was all right. Her next song's gonna be with Kid Rock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't even know what a ukulele was until the Colleen song. I thought it was a little guitar when she mm -hmm. pulled it out at first. Now we got We Didn't Start the Fire by Fall Out Boy versus Body Like a Back Road by <laughs> Sam Hunt. And We Didn't Start the Fire by Fall Out Boy is, of course, a cover of of the Billy Joel song, right? which almost made this bracket on its own yeah. until this one came out and replaced all of the references from the original song with modern, well, from 89 to now. Yeah. And it's something. Kanye West and Taylor Swift, Stranger Things, Tiger King, Ever Given Sue, and Weed and Start the Fire. When it gets into the Weed and Start the Fire, the instrumentation around it is kind of rocking. It, it's like, here's what I will say. Patrick Stump's <laughs> voice is meant for a song that sounds like this. Yeah, it's like when you get past the modern references and you just get to the Weed and Start the Fire, a melody we all know and love. Don't. Wince at. I'm right. gonna go further. I'm gonna burn myself on a stake right here. Go. Oh no. I thought it was kind of fun to hear what the next references were gonna be. Yeah, because because like too. it sucks. Like it's corny. It's so corny. It's so corny. But I I I was are like, gonna say Tom Brady? I, I was like waiting for what they were gonna say. It was fun. Brady for Spears. Me. What are they gonna say? It's kind of fun. It's a, I was waiting, you know, to see what it would it's be. A little walk down memory lane, Brad. You like that? I love pop culture. Right, give me this shit. Listen. Okay. You listen. Yeah. <laughs> This was not needed. <laughs> no. This is something a child could write. Wow, you guys really distracted the shit out of me. That was a real thing right there. <laughs> you guys wanted to put the original here? Well, you, you thought about this it. shit's okay? You Wait. thought about the original? I don't know all the references Billy Joel's talking about, so it's kind of like yawn to me. Yeah, what is he he's saying? He's talking about like the Berlin Wall. What the fuck is that? Yeah, I don't know that shit about yeah. that. I only who know who's Ronald Reagan. Literally, I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea who any of these people are. I, yeah, I don't know. And that's why I liked this one. Tiger like, King. I feel Kanye. like. Do you remember Tiger King? We Dude, all watched it during the pandemic the, in March. The, the of March of twenty twenty. She killed her husband. Like, Maybe the, she might have not what though. The she fuck? Might not, he might be in Cuba. And then these two are entertained by jingling keys. Keys is yeah. what this is. Do and if they do don't vote this through, I swear to God. Do the keys. Do you have keys? Do, do the keys, keys thing. Please. I love the keys thing. Yeah. You got them? Body like a back row, driving with my eyes closed. I, and I get the sentiment. He knows the back roads, so he knows his partner's body. Which but, is a wonderland, by the way. Understood. But when I hear this, <laughs> I picture someone's back like covered in lumps. <laughs> like, you know how a back road's like bumpy? <laughs> when it says body like a back road, I just picture like someone who's like... <laughs> A disgusting gargoyle like creature. I picture just a, a, a yellow line down the spine. Ah, okay. And their back is concrete. Yeah. I like this song. I have in the last maybe four months turned and like most, if not all, pop country now because I've just given in and given up. Um, <laughs> I love it. I don't know. I don't know. There's something about just drinking and not caring. Does that have something to do with your uh, obsession with Fox News lately? No, I can't really. I don't know how those two would coincide. Yeah, I don't get that. One's the truth and the other's just pure entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> as for the truth, 
Sam Hunt and <laughs> the gang that make country music. Speaking of not caring, by the way, I mean, sometimes you got to talk to the manager. Yeah. You just have to. I know. If the service is bad, you got to talk to him. Yeah. Let him know what's up. The steak is dry. That's yeah. what I say. So I didn't come here to pay good money to be disappointed. By the way, I didn't bring this up before, but since you made a mistake on the steak, it is my wife's birthday, and we do want 50% off now and that cocktail on the house. Yeah. <laughs> if not, I will ruin you on Yelp. I don't hate either of these songs. Neither man. do you I. I, <laughs> I think... I think uh, I think Fall Out Boy's cover is worse. One, because it's a cover and it's like lazy on their end and they just pumped it full of... It's like if you took the top 20 hashtags of the last, <laughs> you know, 30 years and just put them in a song. Which is a great idea. It is, it's, but it's not... It's, it's like a shiny new toy that I'm still playing with. No one has ever <laughs> said your body is like a back road until Sam Hunt said it. And damn it, that's beautiful. If Sam Hunt said that to me, I'd let him take the 4x4 four four out, race it around, get it all the flaps all muddy, and have himself a good time. I'd let him do a donut in my butt. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Ah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Insightful. Yeah. Thank back road you. shots. You know what I mean? I'd get, let him do a back road shot. Back road shots. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. So, and my. Pump me like your shotgun, Sam. That's what I'd say. Baby oh, got my. back road. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we didn't start the fire by Fallout Boy. Is the, the fact that they would do this, I feel like, is the most pretentious shit I've ever seen. That's like, fair. oh, we need to be the ones to update this. But then Sam Hunt, Body Like a Back Road, is possibly one of the most atrocious <laughs> pop country fusions I've ever heard and does one of my least favorite things things ever in music combining country with trap instrumentation yeah and it sounds like uh whitewashing garbage so i hate both of these but mainly i think that we didn't start the fire by fallout boys the bigger atrocity i would agree it's the bigger atrocity and that's why i like looking at it more <laughs> <laughs> for the trap by 645 ar versus pop champagne by jim jones it's a good matchup right here this is good for the trap also in the top five most requested to yeah. be in this bracket. That's and uh, I will say I have like an intense bias here. Right. <laughs> If you've got like a stupid little kid's brain, then this song sucks. But if you like think about music a little bit, just a little bit, it's, awesome. it's, 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 it's yeah. so fucking good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, people have done high voice, squeaky voice rap shit before. Never like not this. Not like no. this. Not that high. And not with this ad lib. No. I legitimately, the first time I heard 645 AR, which was before this song came out, like he would just post a video of him dancing in his room to his own song with the caption, I'm better than Tupac. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he was doing. And that's what caught my attention. I was like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> I fuck with it all the way. I think 645 AR is fire. Yeah, I think it goes way beyond novelty. I think his song with FK Twigs was like one of my favorite songs that came out that year. Yeah. I think that his gimmick is just honestly like another step forward of what was already going on. I think people were just afraid of it. This one was uh, by your request included. Just Shout out to whoever the hell sent me this on stream. Uh, this song is Jim Jones Pop Champagne. Enjoy. Oh, pop Champagne. Oh, pop Champagne. <laughs> Some of the worst auto-tune of all time. Okay, it's so far off. <laughs> and the key beat and... is crazy. Holy shit. Wow. I was yeah. shocked by this song. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. And it's a charting single, too. This thing yeah. was like in the top 100. When you suggested it, I was like, oh, I remember that. It wasn't that bad. And then I would listen to it, and I was like, what the fuck happened? I was like, Where... <laughs> yeah. my memory did not serve me correctly. <laughs> it's like people's brains didn't know how auto-tune yeah. worked yet, where they just kind of were like, oh, nice. Wait a minute. No. Whoa. Well, hey. Like, yo, that's <laughs> futuristic. <laughs> yo. This is like what I imagine any auto-tune song sounds like to an old person. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like club music to people who hate clubs. It is far worse than Fort Trap. By far. Not yeah, even it's a not even close. It's it's hilarious. I recommend anyone who's watching this look this one up. I mean, this it's it's great. It's great. Awesome video, through. too. Now we got Trumpets by Jason Derulo versus I'd Rather Die by Tramp Stamps. Yeah. A tough one. This is a tough matchup. No way. And the trumpets, they go. <laughs> Yeah, those aren't real trumpets. You think he could have just got real trumpets for a song called Trumpets? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what a real trumpet sounds like. I've never seen one, but... I've never seen a real instrument in general. What the fuck? I just, yeah. I don't know. I know Ableton or whatever and yeah. Fruity Loops, but... Yeah. yeah, Jason Arula is one of those people that when I hear his music, I get the feeling I really wouldn't get along with him in person. Oh, don't sell yourself short like that. I know he seems really <laughs> cool, but... I just don't think we would see eye to eye on things. I will say it seems like he does not give a shit about his own music. No. <laughs> like, at all. No. And he can really say and it's like, wow, what a shame. You yeah, know, that's a shame. I think so. No, I've seen his, him before live. It was like a rat dying. That sounds awesome. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought I thought you meant like a like a dumbass snitch, <laughs> like a rat dying. Jesus. I love uh, love the melody. 
I do like the melody at its yeah. core. I like the part. I like the the name part. Mike, Matthew, whatever. It just starts naming yeah. all his names. Michael like, and Matthew and Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And I mean, same here. I'd rather die than hook up with a straight white guy. I think that's fucked up. Depends on twenty twenty three. Matthew McConaughey or not? No, I just mean like I because he's straight, and so I'd rather die than violate the consent of a, of a, somebody else. Oh, because oh, right. if he's straight, oh, there's no way he wants to hook up with me. You backed me into yeah. a corner there. I yeah. see what you mean. And it do. seems like you guys are a little fucked up on what consent means. I, but listen, oh, I oh no I, no I, not us. It says right there, straight white guy. Um, so, you know, I yeah, I'm a guy, so I don't know. <clears throat> Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Trumpets is worse to me. This song's way worse to, than. Trumpets. I'd rather die is literally like to anyone who heard that and thought this is just an annoying generic like pop punk song. You're right, and so much more. It is literally <laughs> one of the worst things I've ever heard, and sitting through it is truly torture. I also want to say like blow job. <laughs> it's grown on me. No, but. The way that it's sung, I can't believe <laughs> yeah. that blowjob sounds like, like that in the song. I can't believe how a blowjob sounds in real life. <laughs> know, it right? sounds crazy. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll die on the trumpet tail, but you guys move on, tramp stamps. Good. I'd rather die. See? Now we got Happier by Marshmallow versus <laughs> Lamborghini by KSI. <laughs> Lambo. <laughs> I love this right here. Means I'll have to leave. I like it. This one got Bastille in the mix, right? I want you to be happier. It's not that bad. It's like just as bad as all those big whatever. Yeah. Like whatever that genre is. This is like uh, when people go to those marathons and they get paint or powder, put all the colors. Day glow. Day glow. It's like a day glow vibe. Yeah. I'm like, you fucking suck, you dirty white person, but. Do your thing. Yeah, it's you like Safe I mean? and Sound and yeah. all those type of American <laughs> authors. Sure. They are. I think this song is actually a really interesting example of some like cognitive dissonance where it's quite literally like everything about this song is sad except for the instrumental, but for some reason it's just extremely catchy and works. I yeah. actually don't hate this. I absolutely, I will say, love a song <laughs> where a rapper is screaming and can't for the life of them sound angry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing like angry. <laughs> like you couldn't try to actually yeah. sound angry. We need the KSI <laughs> stitches collab. Yeah. Uh, like this is hilarious. <laughs> this song I had never heard either. And either. holy shit, it is bad. It is unbelievable. I bad. So my first exposure to this song was in a um, Overwatch lobby where I was like just hanging out and these kids were literally just like blasting the ear version of this song through the mic of any game they went in. And it was beautiful. <laughs> like it was the most trolly shit ever. And I gotta say, if it was the bass boosted version, I'd give it points. But unfortunately, I think the original is just a little lame. KSI moves on. Next, Roxanne by Arizona Zervis versus Lift Yourself by Kanye West. Roxanne, all she wanna do is party all night. What's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. First time I heard it, I was like, oh yeah, you know, another pop rap song is yeah. probably gonna be everywhere. The more I heard it, something much sinister, more more sinister yeah. arose. Okay, what is it? I think it was just like, I think an algorithm ran something to figure out what could be like most catchy and simultaneously annoying. Roxanne, Roxanne, do you just wanna go and party all night? <laughs> It just like sticks in your head. It's like fucked up. It's like a parasite. That's good. I think this song is uh, one of the few, I'd say, fuck boy anthems that yeah. I don't actually hate and I actually kind of fuck with it. Really? Yeah, I actually like this song quite a bit. The only fuck boy anthem that I fuck with is Jordan Belfort. I've been getting dirty, dirty money, money, Jordan, Jordan Belfort. <laughs> yep. Poop. Scoop dee dee whoop. Whoop dee dee scoop. Whoop dee dee. It's awesome. Songs that are supposed to be purposefully bad, like, I don't know if I can really rate them the same way. Right. I mean, the story of this is crazy, yeah. I guess. It's like, Drake wanted this beat, Kanye released it to spite him, with him just saying poopity scoop all over it. It's kind of badass. It's kind of badass, but it's also kind of petty. It's like the perfect storm, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think Kanye did nothing wrong. Whoa, Brad! Whoa, Brad, 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 back it up, buddy. Despite all I said about <laughs> Roxanne and me liking it, it is worse than than Kanye just pooping on a beat. I kind of agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me by Taylor Swift featuring Brendan Yuri of Panic at the Disco versus Fight Song by Rachel Platten. Or like Rachel Platinum. All right, because that song is, it's pretty bad actually. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it might be Platinum though. I'm not it sure. It might be. <laughs> 
Has there ever been a song that sounded more like the inside of a Macy's? <laughs> you know, it's like, like yeah. it was like designed to be like shopping. Like yeah. it's like shopping right before Christmas. I think it was supposed to be kind of like a Broadway musical sort of vibe. Sure. But really just sounds like a Macy's. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's got Brendan Urie on it, so they're definitely going for that fucking musical garbage. Mm -hmm. It might be Taylor Swift's worst song. I would agree. No, I think she's got even worse. I think if you go into the reputation era. This is my fight song. Take back my life song. They sound so similar. I wrote down stuff about each of them, and I wrote down that the Taylor Swift song sounds like the inside of a Macy's, and I wrote down that this one sounds like it was made for commercials. It sounds like the like hardworking mom who's like burnt out, but now she's like getting up off the couch and like taking her life back. Yeah, totally. She's about to go for a walk around the block that's gonna solve everything. And that's her fight song, is this one. You say that the Roxanne one sounds AI generated. This is the most out of touch, hilariously fake John Doe of a song that I think has ever existed. And I want to move it on just to spite it for being literally the most gutless piece of shit I've ever heard. I'm not sure that Rachel Platten exists. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, exactly. it, it, that's like a, literally, you, yes. you know what I mean? Like it doesn't yeah. matter who made this song. No. Yeah. You put it out under 10 different names yeah. and nobody would notice. All right, now we got a Centerfold by the Jay Giles Band yeah. versus Wheels on the Bus by Melanie oh, Martinez. Man. Oh. Fuck. AKA Felony Martinez, AKA Smelony Fartinez, AKA R. Kelly Martinez. Jeffrey Epstein is. No song makes me like laugh out loud. Like, I, know, so, I love this song. It's so funny. It's awesome. It almost feels like the Rednecks who made Cotton Eye Joe kind of like produced it. That's what I was going to say earlier. I said bam, a song reminds bam, me of. Bam, 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 this bam, is bam, the song bam. that reminds me of that same vibe. Yeah. Cotton Eye Joe. It's awesome. I love this song. A little pirate shanty sort of thing going on. I don't know what it is. Angel is a centerfold. Yeah, I got no issue with this. Blood runs cold. I used to dance to this on Dance Dance Revolution. Fuck yeah, you did, you little fucking weirdo. Stop. <laughs> Stop you little fucking freak. Stop flirting with me. I'm not flirting with you. I'm calling you a fucking freak. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so bad. Yeah. Brad, so, catch me up. Yeah, what's a the bit deal? Here. Is it like a hand job on the bus and the bus driver's watching? Oh yeah. This <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is off of Melanie Martinez's second album where the whole crybaby aesthetic worked and she released a project called K through twelve. Everything about this is like edgy kids smoking weed and jerking off. It is literally the worst possible, most despicable, disgusting. But of course it's art, so none of that matters. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. A lot of people don't know this. Melanie Martinez never really experienced, and in her own words, that much, uh, actually at all, any uh, bad childhood experiences that she sings about. They are all made up. Everything about it, so. Whoa. Yeah. I guess that's the difference between, like, Nirvana doing, like, uh, school or, like, the Grandma Take Me Home. Like, all those yeah. kids on stuff about being, like, a kid where it's like, no recess. Nirvana is an interesting comparison to Melanie Martinez. Because, like, all those songs, a lot of stuff on Bleach is written from the perspective like of a kid. Kurt being a kid, but they're all experiences yeah. that he wrote about in, like, his journal and shit. So yeah. that's his to write about and doesn't get into really super gross territory unless you read the the rest of the journals, but when Melanie gets in gross territory, it's weirdly fetishy. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a ukulele apology from her at some point. Yeah, yeah, she ain't ever gonna apologize for shit. Well, Colleen didn't either, so I guess I'm uh, not a ukulele non apology, like a yeah, clap back, if you will. Yeah. Melanie moves on here, though. Those wheels on the bus are gonna keep rolling. This yeah. is probably, I think, the biggest gap between the two. Songs oh, yeah, I've seen. totally. That's a whole list. All right, now we got <laughs> <laughs> AJR's Netflix trip versus Hey Soul Sister by Train. This is an awesome matchup. Yeah. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, this is a good one. Oh! There were a lot of AJR songs that were commented on the first bracket. Mm -hmm. uh, I had never even listened to them until we prepared for the first bracket. And then this one just intrigued me because <laughs> this song is all about watching The Office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like fell in love in season two. It's like it has like it like says Steve Carell's name. It's like, I don't know. There's something just about the way that they write songs. And that... it's like fife and drum music. It almost sounds like, you know, revolutionary war tunes. Going <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most out there ridiculous shit and I literally hate every single second of it. Yeah. <laughs> the people who openly call themselves quirky love AJR. Yeah, they kind of label themselves as alternative, but I mean, 
I, they definitely are alternative if you know alternative means I'd rather alternatively listen to anything. We just need train to save the ukulele's life. <laughs> See, here's the thing is like, I know that this is probably, this is like a whitewashing version of whatever. I, I don't care. Whenever I hear this song, I see waves rolling in on the beach. Yeah, like, oh, like, buddy. <laughs> you know? And I know that it's not like, oh yeah. You know, these are just like some white guys from probably like Oklahoma or Seattle. some shit. Oh, they're from Seattle. Yeah, he's a big damn. Mariners fan. Oh, okay. Sorry. He's been on ESPN multiple times. Very knowledgeable about baseball. Bet you didn't know that. I don't know what baseball is. Okay. <laughs> I think a lot of people expect me to hate this song. I mean, there are definitely moments in like where he says, I'm so gangster, I'm so thug, you're the only one I'm dreaming of. Fire. He it, says that? I, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I personally absolutely love how it seems like he's having the time of his fucking life. Yeah. Him, so a lot of people will find this to be annoying. They'll hate the lyrics. To me, it just sounds like a guy doing what he likes doing, and yeah. it's infectious. So I kind of like it. <laughs> this one definitely rings off if your mom plays it on, like, the XM radio or something. Well, this one's easy. I'd rather listen to Train any day over AJR, no matter, honestly, how bad the Train song is. Yeah. Now we got Barbie Girl by Aqua versus Don't Worry, Be Happy. Let's by go. Bobby McFerrin. These are two good songs. It's going to be an interesting one. I mean, I get it's annoying. I just hate Ken's part. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. That's not what Ken would sound like. I know. At all. Ken sounds like cute Ryan Gosling. Yeah, yeah. Be realistic about it. Yeah. Ken would do anything for Barbie. He's not like a toxic yeah, male figure. He's not overly masculine either. No. He's like a pretty boy. He should be like way nicer in the song, I think. Yeah. But if he, if he was like, hello, Barbie, do you want anything from the store? Yeah. You know, stuff like that, I think would have been more realistic as to Ken's character. Don't worry, I'm gonna pick you up at six. I've already made reservations. I've chosen where we're going. I've bought you a dress for the night and I rented a cottage up north for us to spend the night at. Hello, Barbie, here's some flowers. <laughs> yeah. I think it's very offensive that you assume that Ken is a simp instead of a, you know, Chad. I didn't say simp. Just a respectable man. He asks women what they want. You know, uh, he, yeah, that's total simp he goes behavior. out of his way to make sure that she's happy. Oh, uh, yeah. The term simp is antiquated. I like to use the term servant. <laughs> I'm a servant to yeah. my woman. That's what I say. I don't have a woman. Hell yeah, same here. Well, it's soon to be. I'm just kidding. I love you, baby. I know you're watching. I love you, baby. <laughs> don't say baby on the show. I love you, baby. You know that goes. That's fire. Ooh, big wet one for her. All right, let's hear Bobby McFerrin. Don't worry, be happy now. Okay, shut up. That singing is amazing. Also, what people aren't understanding is Bobby McFerrin makes all those noises with his mouth. Yeah, he's no, a fucking legend. Yeah. People that. don't know that. Oh. He yeah. does thinking about your body. And he's on stage going. Go. That's pretty good, actually. Thinking about you. He's like a concert of a man. It's no, awesome. He's no, a the, fucking legend. Yeah, the guy's amazing. He's a fucking legend. Yeah. Yeah, no, he has a lot of great stuff on YouTube that anyone is curious to check it out. He yeah, is so really sick. Cool. And he also has a hit song. All I'm going to say is that uh, when I was in Florida with my grandma growing <laughs> up, I convinced her to buy me a Billy Bass. Yeah. And then to put on her wall at her house in Fuck Cleveland. Yeah. And she put it on there. And if you pressed a button, it would turn and sing this song. Yeah. And, yeah, that and, was and the thing. So, so I just associate it with my parents being really annoyed yeah. whenever I'd press it because it would sing like too long of it. It yeah. was like a minute long. It would like do you that. press the button, it would go, Don't worry. I <laughs> Be a, 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 a. I didn't know that was a real like, thing. I saw that in Flushed Away. They had also oh, sang, uh, don't rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby, rock the boat, don't, don't tip, tip the, the boat, boat over. over. Which is kind of weird because as a bass, you probably want the boat to tip over. Yeah, so that they, you could eat you the human slowly. Yeah. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah. I thought that I was thinking of like the bass was longing for the boat no. to tip over so that the humans would fall in so they'd have food for life. Nope. Um, <laughs> Barbie Girl's like a way a more annoying song. It's fun at times, but like there is one song on this entire bracket that I could like listen to on the way home and be like pleased and listen to the whole thing. And it is Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy. Barbie Girl it is. Now we've got Never Enough by Kid Rock versus Shush Up by Allison Gold. Fuck all you hoes. <laughs> Detroit till I die, motherfucker. Never enough. 
where the auto tune was off key for the Jim Jones song, here it's just clipping out the whole time. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's like he's drowning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they fucked up that bad, but it literally progressively gets worse throughout the entire song. It's like you're driving deeper into the woods and like you're losing signal of the radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> it's literally 808s and vocal breaks. Yeah. <laughs> if you want auto tune kid rock, listen to only God knows why. Yeah. I've never like heard that one. Auto tune ballad kid rock, and it is, I mean, it's still kind of bad because it's kid rock, but it's like pretty awesome. Crank it or sh- you crank it or sh- you crank it or sh- What's going on with this song? I think they were signed to like the same person who was doing the Rebecca Black, like her, like whoever was managing her. And oh. they were just coming up with like, uh, you know, pre written garbage and putting kids <laughs> over it. 2014 hot pop trash. I think Kid Rock has the most legendary bad song with Never Enough. I think that there's no doubt in my mind that he should move on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Detroit, baby. Let the guy win around. Next, we got Double D's by the Black Eyed Yes. D's <laughs> versus Fancy Like by Walker Hayes. Holy fuck, holy fucking fuck. The body of yours is absurd. I do anything for it, that's my word. <laughs> this might be the worst song I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Holy shit. The whole first verse is the Adam Levine text. Which is kind of genius. It gets worse, too. He's like, uh, the hook's like, I know what you want from me. These double, 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 And just keeps fucking going. An atrocity, but like, I was so happy I heard it. I'm glad it exists. I'm glad it exists, yeah. And I want to meet the person that loves this. You know, we've used that metric earlier because you know the archetype of the person that likes some of these bad songs. I don't know this person. Uh, 38 years old. Okay. And like, thinks they can still dance, like go to clubs and dance. My brother-in-law. Got it. Yeah, we fancy like Applebee's on a date night. Got to Burma Street State. This is the pop country song that I was talking about being particularly bad compared to the other ones. It is. And the Ooh. commercial edge, like the fact that it ended up being picked up by Applebee's and becoming like a part of their brand, I feel like is also just a really weird, like it makes it even harder to listen to than it already was. Mm-hmm. And I read an interview with him because I also looked up if this song was supposed to be a joke and apparently he like wasn't big before this song yeah. and then it blew up and his response they're like why'd you write about Applebee's were you like trying to get them to note it and he was like I got six kids man I got a lot of mouths to feed so Applebee's about as fancy as I go and Seems I was like kind of really like good guy. I was like okay like I kind of like the guy yeah, yeah but yeah. the song itself I was like holy shit it is rough it's corny it's one of those situations where I think that it's like if the song didn't blow up then I'd probably like it but it's the fact that people know about it and they picked it up as well as just like the original intention gets lost and I think the song is absolute dog shit. I can't imagine a context where I would like Fancy Like but Double D's is just aggressively worse. It doesn't even seem like a song. No, it seems like they were like we gotta make this Adam Levine track quick. Like this shit, (laughs) these jokes. Will, get in there. (laughs) Actually, fuck it. We're gonna have your AI do it. We don't even care. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter. This song's gotta come out tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, while people are still finding new text from Adam (laughs) that we can add into the song later. I believe I'm saying Double D's are worse than anything. <laughs> yeah. That. Hell <laughs> yeah, brother. Now we got another falling in reverse song, Bad Girls Club versus Logic and Marshmallows Every Day. Oh my God. Just another victim of the Bad Girls Club. Yeah, without like being reminded of it right there, I was like, falling in reverse might not advance this round and then... I don't think that anymore. There's a cheer section at the end where it's like, your love is like a drug. Yeah. That does it not enough. The other one's worse. The other, the other one is worse. Game over is worse, but this song is also fucking really bad. I work hard every motherfucking day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that's like annoying because of what Logic says, but, 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 but it's not falling in reverse bad. This is another one that kind of reminded me, like the Oliver Tree song, just like how lazy a lot of hook writing. Mm-hmm. Like, like, of course, there's a song that goes, Every day, yay, yay. Like, how did that not already exist? But I think the most egregious thing about this is like all of the whole, the whole song is about working hard and yeah. being inspired, whatever. And then he says, my friend's real hood. Yeah. On a marshmallow song. Well, what if marshmallow's like a kingpin of the Sino cartel or something? I guess we don't know because he doesn't take that bucket off his head. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know what he looks so like. So maybe Logic ain't lying. I mean, yeah, I guess. It's just kind of like the, the production plus that plus the rest of the song has nothing to do with any of it. <laughs> right. It was yeah. just super <laughs> odd. Yeah. It feels out of place and it feels soulless yep. more than most Logic stuff. Because I do think that like Logic's music, it's not my thing, but it doesn't, it, has a place. U- it doesn't usually sound like this commercial yeah. and plain and spineless. I think that Falling in Reverse is worse though. I think that this 
Logic and Marshmallow song is just sad, especially with him talking about how he had to sell out to make money and to make an inspiring song like this is just, I mean, you saw with like, he, he was releasing music where like he said one of the worst lines I've ever heard in my entire life. It was um 1-800, then I kill the pussy who can relate is like the most tone deaf possible thing to show that he just does not give a shit. And so I have a really bad distaste for every day. I would pick that just also because, I mean, I think that the Falling in Reverse song is just not worse than Game Over, and I think that there's something just really twisted about every day. Honestly, that kind of swayed me. It we already got we already got too. Falling in Reverse on the other side. Kind of swayed me, too. <laughs> oh, whatever, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I kind of forgot about that. He said that he sold out to make the Marshmallow song, and he, like, yeah, doesn't yeah. care. He just yeah. did it to make a lot of money. Fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. I hate when people do shit for money, but uh, if you want to subscribe to our Patreon or join our membership. We could buy our merch. Anything, we have some on Cope's we website. Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to ask you guys, out. when am I getting paid? to be here oh you didn't ask before you came so now it's like you're here you might as well but if you want to support me then you know i do have a <laughs> that you're able to go to and you know you can send me if you're and whatnot. yeah okay. and the name of the channel again is uh, cool you cool. have heard you guys heard that pretty clear that's your only channel you don't have anything else um i also have uh okay. oh cool cool yeah so be sure to check those out yeah all right last matchup in the first round we've got david Guetta's i'm good versus crazy town's butterfly you my sugar fly, honey, baby. We all did the 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 club banger. It's beautiful. <laughs> Love it. I, I get it. It's like you know Eiffel sixty five blue. Yeah. I'm blue. Da ba dee da ba die. And then it's kind of funny because Uzi and Nicki Minaj did it on Uzi's album as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's like people are reaching for that Y two K like electronic sure. aesthetic, whatever. This song, I don't know. It's like trash, but it really captured what was good about trashy pop music in yeah. like two thousand ten. I agree. Yeah, I kind of understand where you're coming from. I, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like I'm supposed to hate it more than I do. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. The best fucking night of our lives. <laughs> and the music video is gas, because yeah. David Guetta's like 52, got his shirt off, and he's just like, he's ripped, by the way, and he's just dancing with all these like young model women. It's completely like odd, like makes you feel weird. I do not endorse 50 year old men dancing with model women who are very young, unless of course they're being paid for a music video. You know, I don't know if that's much better. Uh, uh, oh, I endorse it. <laughs> I would dance with him. I'd pop my top off too. And you're almost that age, so. I'm almost as good looking as a supermodel. Is that what you're going to say? How would I be about to say that? I finished oh, the whole sentence. My bad. I, I, already said, gonna... I already said you're almost I thought that you were going to say I would fit seamlessly kind of into the hot, sexy supermodels dancing around David Guetta. No, I, I wasn't even close to saying <laughs> anything like that. Yeah. Oh, but you're done? Yeah, what? I know. Yeah, see, no. Still not going to say that. Okay. Yeah. There's some that might say that, but you were close. No, you're close to the age of David Guetta. I am? Yeah, I mean, it's all right. I don't hate it. I don't love it, though. Come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. Give my butterfly. Sugar, baby. What is this song? Like, where, where is this from? Like, why is this? What Early is 2000s, like, white guys with soul patches and gel in their hair that were in, like, rock rap groups. It feels like a lot of people got a pass to rap at that time. <laughs> yeah, they deserved it. Kind of raps like Eminem on some of this too, which I think is funny. It's like Limp Biscuits cooler cousin. I think this song is unbelievably creepy, sounds awkward as all hell, and is aged horrifically. I think it's terrible. Come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. Feels like a selfless lover. Some people don't even tell their lady to, they don't care if their lady comes. Yeah. I would think that it's actually worse than David Guetta, even though I think that's a hot take. This is the one I'm, I don't, I'm going to vote for the David Guetta song so we can talk about it again. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's worse. I think it's better by a lot. But I just, I don't know, something about it. I just would like to talk about it again in like, okay. in like 10 minutes. All right. <laughs> On to the cool. second round we Yo. go. We're done playing the clips of the songs. Yes. And we're done really analyzing what they're about and whatever it's just gonna be about this song versus that song which one's moving on first matchup we've got yummy versus life goes on i am obviously gonna plug in i think the yummy's better because it's i like that song kind of i agree i have to really think about this one life goes on and on and on and on and on okay you if you convince me it's life goes on okay <laughs> yeah because i mean oliver tree could never do like that a match get litty bay that about that a bitty bay yeah you know that's like a really nice melody there's something all right you've there. convinced me it's yummy all right Wait. Moving you're, on. Yeah, you're... that that performance was so bad. <laughs> I uh, I think that it's definitely yummy. Oh, Oliver Tree's worse. Though. Oliver Tree though. So we get yeah. to it's Oliver Tree. We overruled song. you. Wa bang. You know I mean? We will bang you. All right. Nice haircut on him though. Oh. 
Oh, the not bowl cut. You don't like my fucking haircut. <laughs> oh, now we got a little uh, math matchup. We got seven years versus one thought, two thought. Red thought, blue thought. <laughs> it's Lucas Graham for me all the way. I think that it's just legendary levels of bad. We are going to get in. We got a problem. I, I want you to feel welcome here. I do. I do, too. I do, but I really don't think that seven years. <laughs> it's not as bad as. At one point, Young Gravy says, and I'm chilling with some Asians. <laughs> it's not even like at one point. That's like the second line yeah. of the song. It's like, holy shit, dude. That's not a flex. Ugh, it's dude. not a bad thing. You know what I mean? It's not <laughs> a bad thing flex. either. It's yeah. not a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. I'd it's say just... it's overall mentioning that in the song is just like perpetuating a negative stereotype. Right. Overall. It's fetishizing. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to go with the Young Gravy Me song. Too. I don't think it's as legendarily bad. I just am like, if I see the two songs next to each other, I just think the Young that Gravy one's worse. One's worse. Yeah. Once I was seven years old. Fresh out of London versus Centuries. 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 Okay, I'm glad you guys, I couldn't I couldn't pick. Fresh Out of London is like, whatever. It's like, if I'm comparing it to like the other YouTube rap song on here, KSI's song is like sonically harder to listen to. And it's just like the Jake Paul shit is like, whatever. It's like, it's yeah. sad. It's more sad than it is bad. Like, it sucks that I have to live in the time where I even have to talk about Jake Paul's Fresh Out of London. All right, Steve Aoki, Pretender. Versus Magic's Rude. Stevie Aoki. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Definitely. A consensus. Why you gotta be so rude? Marry that girl. Gonna marry you anyway. All right, now we got Fack versus Molly Cyrus. Two of the most obnoxious songs on this bracket. One is way Fack. more obnoxious. Yeah. It's Fack. It's Fack. Fact. Yeah. The fact that that song, <laughs> the fact, the fact that that song even exists and is called that is just a wild thing. I don't like the picture of Eminem coming either. It's, uh, I think that adds it's to anal it. stimulation too. Yeah. So, you know, you get to think about a lot of angles to it. So mm -hmm. the song really lets it marinate. Gonna marinate anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Bezos versus Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> Wait up a dip, Jeff Bezos. I've been married long time ago. Where did he come from? Where did he go? Something, something, Jeff Bezos. I gotta go with Bo Burnham. You, I feel like you guys are gonna disagree with me because you like think Bo Burnham's smart and funny and shit. But. I think Bo Burnham is like Kendrick Lamar if he was able to write songs. Wow. That's that says a lot about you as a person that you're even willing to say shit like that. What do you mean by that? that it says a lot. That's what I mean by it. I need to know what you mean by that, though. I need. It means what credibility you walked in with this building will not be leaving with you. That was a beautifully constructed sentence. Thank you, and I'm glad you took it well. <laughs> I'll just go with whatever. <laughs> Here's what I will say. Okay, a lot of people out there saying eat the rich. I say burn them. Oh my god. That's terrible. I think Cotton Eye Joe is is like more of a song that matters to talk about. Like I just I agree. It, we should move on because I just think Bezos is just like an like a thought and it's part of like a skit or whatever. I agree. <laughs> Jeffrey Bezos. Hello Kitty versus Game Over. Ooh. Fuck. Hello Kitty, downright offensive. We've talked about that. Game over, harder to listen to. Like cringe on a Richter scale. I think I like Hello Kitty more. Yeah, I think I laugh at Hello Kitty. Uh, game over didn't make me laugh. Yeah, it just made me sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shout wow. out Ronnie. Ronnie the rat rad key. <laughs> no condom versus Mia Khalifa. Again, it's like Grant had this all planned out. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like really crazy. <laughs> Where he put the no condom song in the bracket. It's, it's honestly, perfect. The layers of genius are revealing themselves. What would it theoretically go up against in Game the Game over. But honestly, I think Mia Khalifa is the worst song here. Uh, yeah, I think so too. I think like vi like just to listen to, like yeah. I understand how fucked up it is on a sentiment level, the DaBaby song, but the Mia Khalifa song is also a bad sentiment and way harder to listen yes. to, in my opinion. Yeah, that Mia Khalifa song is iconic. Even though I think that, you know, there are parts of it that are unlistenable, I still think No Condom is actually just a worse song. It's harder to listen to for me. Second side, Thunder versus I Will Wait. Thunder so easily, right? Fine. Oh, well, I oh, love it. I, love it. I mean, it's fine. I wanted you guys to voice your opinion first. I just, I don't know. Thunder is just like whatever. It's almost like boring. I Will Wait is like 5,000 English people screaming at me <laughs> that they're like <laughs> old American. <laughs> I will wait. I will. And it's like, ah, it's, ooh, it's like. <laughs> it's like in a nightmare when something seems so loud or like so heavy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like things feel like so like disjointing and crazy that song gives me like the feeling of a nightmare yeah and it makes me hate it more thunder is just kind of like an eye roll i will wait is like a oh. you make a good argument but 
my relentless hatred towards Thunder will That's prevail. Fine. Yeah, I Will Wait is kind of like if the movie Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, if everybody had British accents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just wouldn't work. No. They'd be out there like, I'm in a tight spot. <laughs> I'm like, no. I turned him into a toad. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thunder, though. Yeah, that's fine. All right, now we got What Does the Fox Say versus We Didn't Start the Fire Fallout Boy version. It's got to be the fox. The fox. Yeah, the fox, for sure. Yeah. Because, again, the, Tiger King. the Fallout Boy thing is, is fun to listen to to get all the references. Especially if you're like you're with your friends. <laughs> it's like a it's like a pandemic crossword puzzle. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. Russian roulette, you know, it's fun, you know, until <laughs> you know, you start realizing what you're doing is really, really stupid. Honestly, that's kinda wise. What's the bullet though? Like which one's the bullet? Because all of them Don't try to dive into my metaphors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. sorry, yeah. Hey, Stay wait. out of those waters, right? <laughs> Adult swim, I get it. <laughs> Pop champagne. Oh <laughs> Pop Champagne. Whoa. Yeah, we got that song versus I'd rather die by the tramp stamps. Pop champagne's worse. I I kind of stand by the, I fuck with tramp stamps a little bit. That song grew on me. Something about it. The blowjob part, too, specifically. Okay, yeah. Oh, this is so interesting because I think both are on the same level. When a song is catchy and bad because the lyrics are terrible and the sentiment sucks, I can still kind of enjoy hating it. Mm -hmm. Whereas Pop Champagne, like, <laughs> I get it in the first, like, 20 seconds. I am yeah. done. I do not want to hear that <laughs> exactly. song anymore, you know? There's, like, more to find in the tramp stamp song. <laughs> Pop champagne is like, first three seconds, you're like, oh, you fucked up. It's a way out of key, and this isn't going to be fun for anyone. Yeah. Tramp stamps is like a couple eye rolls, and then you're like, did she just say that shit? And then you're like, okay, what's going on? It's yeah. like interesting, at least. And then you can listen to the last part, and it's interesting to see which names she's going to pick. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Oh, but don't be me. Yeah, I, oh, I hope it's me. Now we got KSI's Lamborghini versus Arizona Service Roxanne. KSI. KSI. Lamborghini. Yeah. Lamborghini. Lamborghini. <laughs> Lamborghini. What's his real name? JJ. Thanks, guys. Two letters in his actual name. None of them make the cut for his little whatever acronym. That's yeah, weird. KSI. What does that stand for? What does KSI stand and for? PSI, but the British version. <laughs> Soccer's got to be the middle Kilograms. one. Kilograms. Right? <laughs> oh, it's in metric. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Kilometers. <laughs> right. Seconds oh, in an Jesus. inch or something. Square inch. Kilometers, uh -huh. square inch. Fuck it. I don't know, man. The Brits are weird. It says here that KSI stands for knowledge, strength, and integrity. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Imagine saying that you're a fan of knowledge, strength, integrity, and his funny little FIFA videos. Yeah. Sounds like an Andrew Tate, like... The three pillars of this course are knowledge, strength, and integrity. It sounds like any school's athletic department coming up with their slogan for yeah. the year. We want them to be strong. We want yeah. them to be smart. And they gotta have integrity. Welcome to Vanderbilt. <laughs> if you're gonna play baseball here, you're gonna need knowledge, strength, and integrity. Now we got Fight Song by Rachel Platten versus Wheels on the Bus by Melanie Martinez. I mean, one of these songs is about getting jerked off in a bus and the bus driver being cool with it. And it's about like underage kids and it's not an underage person singing the song. And the other one is Fight Song. <laughs> I think all those things are working in Melanie's favor in this instance, <laughs> which is the only time you'll be able to say that. <laughs> and Fight Song is like a bland piece of shit, but... That's like if somebody walked into your house and they were like, oh, what do you think about my wallpaper? And it's like boring wallpaper. Yeah. And they're like, and what do you think about this picture of somebody jacking off somebody on a bus while the bus driver watches? Like, and that's in the middle of the room and they're like, well, change that first. Yeah. Then we'll deal with the wallpaper. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> AJR Netflix Trip versus Barbie Girl by Aqua. AJR. Yeah, Netflix Trip. We don't need a song about The Office. There's already we the don't. Office theme song, and there's already Lil Wayne rapping over The Office theme song. <laughs> yeah. That's all. That was gas. Dude. I he can rap over anything. Come <laughs> on. I'll rap over my dead body if you wanted to. Actually, if that'd be sick. Turn you guys could arrange that. At the funeral? Yeah. Okay. See if you can get Wheezy to rap some bars. Wheezy rapping at my funeral over my dead body. <laughs> Kid Rock, Never Enough versus the Black Eyed Peas Double Ds. Double Ds. There's like... I can sing the Kid Rock song in my head and I can take the auto-tune out. If they like yeah. fixed the broken auto-tune machine in Kid Rock's office or wherever he made it, fine. then it'd be fine and just a song that's just sitting there, it's whatever. Uh, the Double D's song, you'd have to like redo the whole thing to make that song anywhere near good. I absolutely love the Kid Rock song, <laughs> even though it's the worst thing I've ever heard. But then at the same time, I don't think that Double D's is as bad as Never Enough, but it's also not as well written. It's catchy. Mm -hmm. It's memorable. It's just annoying. So it's got to be double Ds. Okay. Sound logic there, Brad. Speaking, speaking of sound, of, sound speaking logic, of sound yeah. logic. <laughs> <laughs> every day versus I'm good. I wish. I was good every day. You made such a great argument for every day in the last round that I'm going to like just piggyback on that and keep it pushing. Yeah, I just love I'm good. Yeah, so. every day is just gross. Every day, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's every day, bro. Not so sweet 16. We've got 
Life Goes On versus One Thought, Two Thought. Here I go, Life Goes On. Same. Yeah, same. Like the monotone quality of Young Gravy, like if I just stare at the wall while it's playing, it can kind of just turn into like a low hum, almost <laughs> like a box fan. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, usually I'd factor in a lot more stuff, including like verses or instrumental. With the Oliver Tree song, that hook is possibly the most ear grating thing I've ever heard. It's going to be tough to knock that tree down. Speaking of trees, centuries. Yeah, not centuries. Uh, Fall Out Boy Centuries versus Pretender by Steve Aoki. Centuries walks the talk here. Pretender sucks for like the collaboration effort that is just like, why? But Centuries, it's so big. I've got to flip the script on this one. Yeah. I think Pretender is worse here because like at least Centuries, you can tell, was made by talented musicians who you know, knew what they were doing when they made the song. That's a good point. Like it's not a type of song. I'm not glad they set out to make this one, but they knew how to do it. Yeah. And Patrick Stump can sing. And not to say that the whoever's singing for AJR can't sing because they are obviously good singers. Singers, but like that song doesn't seem like they knew what they were making. Yeah. It just kind of is like a it's a slop fest. Just a bunch of garbage all thrown together. I think that the quality of Pretender outweighs the fact that I'm not going to hear it as much. I think that that song is uh, reasonably worse than Centuries and it gets my vote. It's fine with me. I was about to flip, but I wanted you to settle one. <laughs> we got Fack versus Cotton Eye Joe. Fack. <laughs> Fack. It's Fack, yeah. I'm glad that we could see these Fack, two go up yeah. against each yeah. other though, you know? Where did you come from? Where did you go? I'm about to come, yeah, Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Game over versus Mia Khalifa. Game over. Game over. Game over is like really picking up steam. The momentum for game over is real right now. I can feel <laughs> it in the room. Like yeah. it is, I'm looking at all the other songs left and I'm like, I, what's worse? Thunder versus what does the fox say? You guys, go ahead. I'm on the fence with this one. We're all on the fence with this one, man. What does I, the fox say just feels like intention has to play a role. It's a child it's song. It's a child song and it's annoying and it's supposed to be annoying. Thunder, I can't help but picture the smug face of the lead singer of Imagine Dragons thinking that he's written a good mm -hmm. song. And I can hit the people that like Thunder. Legally. And like, yeah, yeah, legally. And like yeah. the, totally, the people yeah. that like what does the fox say, they're like stupid little kids. Well, I don't have those boundaries, so. Oh. Deep down, I have this dark, awful hatred for thunder and there's just something about it that like everything it represents is so bad but it's also just in my opinion if it's on the radio it'll pass but if what does the fox say just happens to show up somewhere it is the longest marathon of torture yeah for me it's got to be what does the fox say i kind of agree i know intention has to matter at a certain point but i think at this point it still doesn't matter uh, it deserves to go on because it's so it's so obnoxious every second that what does the fox say is accidentally on the radio feels Feels like five minutes yeah, trying exactly. to change it. You know what oh, I mean? Shit, shit. Yeah. We fucked up. We oh, fucked, fucked up. Fuck, 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 fuck. I plugged change in it, my kids' it, iPod. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pop Champagne Jim Jones versus Lamborghini KSI. <sighs> This is so easy for me. Pop champagne is Pop champagne. Way oh. worse. Yeah. I know I used the argument you could just fix the auto-tune machine at Kid Rock's office or whatever. If you fix the auto-tune on this bad. one, it'd still it's be still bad. It's still a bad song. Yeah. It'd be much better, you know, if <laughs> it was in key, but the instrumentation itself is just <laughs> yeah, like kind of like a doom. Oh, and the lyrics, like, it is one of the most unoriginal club songs, too. Like, if you yeah. actually are able to get past the auto-tune and hear what they're saying, there's, like, one line where it's like, uh, no sex in the champagne room, I don't listen to the rules. It's like, that alone is going to get you not played in any clubs <laughs> anywhere. Is that really a rule? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Oh, no, come on. No sex in the champagne room. And he's like, says who? <laughs> Baby, I break all rules. It's like, uh. <laughs> I kind of like that. It feels anti-establishment now. You can't have sex with a consenting woman inside the champagne room of a club. If they tell me that rule, I am going to want to break it. I'm going to want to break that rule. <laughs> By the way, I do want to say, just while we have the platform, obviously, uh, you were really early on this fucking Grimace shit, man. I know. They really fucking copped your swag and ran with it. They did a whole Grimace month and everything, and you have been- I didn't bring it up. You've been sexually fantasizing about Grimace for a long time, and there is a paper trail. Our friend Andy texted me maybe three weeks ago and said, yo, Grimace really up right now. You called that shit. And I just shrugged. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I can't do nothing about it. I can't be the guy who's like, I told you Grimace was fucking hot. We we're all gonna fuck him or something. Right. I can't say that. 
I know. Because then I looked like a raving lunatic in the streets. Yeah. I looked at the guy who was like, I told you Jesus would come back to life when Jesus finally comes back to life. Yeah, I, yeah. It just feels like you deserve some credit for... Just wait till Dan Marino runs for president or something and <laughs> fucking wins. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> just wait, man. I mean, that would be more... I feel like that'd be Dignan's call. He definitely talked more about Dan than you have. Whatever. I mean, you've been a proponent of it, but I definitely think that Dignan deserves kind of like the attention there. Guy had pocket presents. Sorry we didn't say happy birthday, Grimace. It just feels like you kind of blew up and it's <laughs> you forgot about the little guy yeah it's like we i don't know if you even remember me man wheels on the bus versus netflix trip wheels on the bus yeah, yeah. he said it i think netflix trip is just cringe due to just being again quirky and tacky i think that melanie is cringe because it's just in poor taste and also like when the fuck would you ever listen to this song too it's like that's what i'm saying <laughs> i'd say that about both of them honestly no. that's fair, know? yeah but like there's like a i can picture the ajr fan base what are the adults that love melanie martinez look like are they Dressed as babies too, goo gooing and gaga ing around town. I mean, I've got stuff. I got dirt. I ain't gonna say it. Stay tuned on Brad's new tea channel called <laughs> Brad T. Brad T. Brad T. Brad T. Brad T. in music. Brad T. Cooper. The radical left. The tea bag. The mm-hmm. big Brad Wolf. The big Brad Wolf. Oh <laughs> wait, that's good. Wait, that's really good. Yeah. What the f- hey? hey. I came up with it first, though, so no royalties, right? What the hell? I mean, it's on camera, but I came up with it first. Yeah, but I did before you did, so, you know. The Big Big Brad Wolf Blitzer, the news show. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> double D's by the Black Eyed Peas versus Every Day by Logic. Double D's. Yeah. yeah, double D's for sure. No doubt. I mean, need to see the booty? You know, when I first heard that song, because it got requested a lot, I thought the first line, I was like, oh my God, just said the Adam Levine thing. That is so corny. And then it just kept happening. Yeah. I was like, oh, you're going to do all the texts. It's, all li- of it's literally labeled the hook. I understand a quick reference. I can't imagine seeing like when that scandal happened. Everybody's first reaction is like, wow, that's so wild. Like out of pocket, gross. Like Adam is a dirt bag. Will I Am's first reaction was, that's a motherfucking Money. song. Like, this dude's spitting. I'm going to lay that down. He just wrote me my next song. The second I'm locked up and 40 with a kid, I'm throwing my phone in the garbage. You can see me on a golf course. And I'll say those nasty things in private to my buddies. Say, John, get that ass out. Something like that. John, yeah. let me see those double Ds. Yeah. <laughs> dump them out, Chris. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> dump them out before you get on the green. They're like, seriously, dude, stop. It's been incessant all day. I'm like, your body is fucking insane, Bill. Show me how you swing that nine iron. <laughs> Woo! They're like, that's it, dude. We're done golfing with you. Sorry, I got a wife at home. Six more twisted Ds. Get the cart girl over here. <laughs> You have a whistle for <laughs> Well, it's how I get the car girl's attention. She's yeah. four holes away and she hears it. She knows the car. And she's like, oh, God. Oh. These guys. <laughs> David, show her how you shake your ass. She's like, no, it's really, it's fine. Carlos, turn that polo into a crop top. Come on. <laughs> it's hot out. Everybody wants to see it, right, guys? Raymond, turn me inside out. Oh, man. That's me. When I'm 40 and married with a kid. Sorry you had to hear all that. It's why I love you guys. <sighs> oh, love is a strong word. <laughs> elite eight. The non-elite eight. Egregious eight. The erroneous eight. The aeronautical eight. Oh, so smart. It was a word that, <laughs> was a word that I don't know. I hate sounding stupid, and you know that. I told you that before. Don't make me sound stupid. It means airplanes. That's something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> all right. Airplane eight. Here we go. Life goes on versus Pretender. Life goes on. Yes. Yeah, life goes on. Wow. I did not expect that song to make it this far, Maybe but not. but it is it's a tough yeah, one. Yeah, it's that bad. Also, I mean, I know it's like a character or whatever, but does Oliver Tree deserve a little heat for kind of dressing up like a little middle schooler on a scooter? Hold on. He did date Melanie Martinez. Oliver Tree did? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. They're about to meet in the championship. She wrote a song about uh him on her new album. What is going on here? Are we about to unravel like the, the most- rap- Rabbit hole, yeah. The most niche fucking controversy of all time. <laughs> you know, um, I had a friend who got into bestiality recently. Fuck yeah. Really went down a rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, hey yo! <laughs> Give me a little of that. You know what I'm talking about? I'm good. I Do you get it though? Do you get it? Because I could explain it. Because he fucked a rabbit in its hole. I gotta call my mom. Call your mom? <laughs> she got now is not up. the time. You're we are just adult. getting into the good stuff. You are an adult. Yeah. You can handle this. You can call her once a month. <laughs> Back versus game over. Oh man, this is this is this isn't fair. Let's be honest. Both of these are worse than the Oliver Tree song. Yes. Like this could be the final. All right, I'm into my decision. Yeah, same. Okay. So with the Eminem song, it was made with the intention to annoy and it succeeded and it's terrible. But I think the Falling in Reverse song is born out of bad taste. And I think that it is 
uh, just worse off of that. And I think that's what simply edges it over is I think that everything about that song screams out of touch and delusional. Yeah, I think uh, sincerity really actually is a detriment to a lot of these songs when you get down to it. Yeah. yeah. If somebody went into it thinking they were making a great song and it turns out that bad, that's a point against it. Yeah, Game Over is worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sucks to see Fat go. I was really, I didn't know how it would lose, but it came up against an immovable object. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got what does the fox say versus pop champagne? I think the fox the can fox. be left behind now. Whoa, whoa. We have think... a charting rap song that's like a serious club song here versus a children's song. I, I was gonna say the sincerity thing is like my number one factor here. I think that Jim Jones and Joel Santana think they made a banger on this one and that is a point against it. That means they got broken ears or did when they made it. But still, if Pop Champagne comes on, I'm laughing. Yeah. If What Does the Fox Say comes on, I am abs I'm running. I'm, <laughs> I'm in distress. Like I'm in panic mode. That's why I'm so torn because they're both like zeros for me. Think about it like in movie format. If like a kid's movie comes on and it's obnoxious to me, I'm like, okay, it's not for me. If a movie that was meant to be cool ends up being the worst shit I ever seen, I think that it deserves to be called worse. Even though I'd rather watch it and hate watch it than a kid's movie that is just obnoxious to me because it's like, of course I'm gonna fucking hate that. All right, I'm convinced. Pop champagne. Move. I says pop that shit. Let's pop move champagne it. because I love the club. Yeah, and me this too. song is not what I want to hear there. Yeah. <laughs> Wheels on the bus versus double D's. Double D's. Uh, I think so too. At least like Melanie Martinez has a bit of singing talent, you know? So. Double D's is just like so strange. I will say that at the back half of double D's, like towards the end, it settles into a thing where it's like kind of all right. Oh, damn it. You're right. I agree. There's a moment in that song. It's like where all these other songs get worse as they keep going. Double D's gets a little bit better. It kind of grows yeah. on you. And yeah. it seems like it was kind of aiming to be like a, like a, Sierra song or something like a 2000s uh -huh. kind of like you know let me see you one two step it's just the will I am part yeah mixed with the fact that it sounds dated oh no I think you're right I think I got a melody. I'll stay on D's side. Yeah, I was gonna say, oh, I say all that to say, I do think that double D's is a more egregious, like, thing in my ears to listen to when I'm not paying attention. The Melanie song, it's like, you the, gotta know a whole story and listen to it to, like, really understand why it's so The content's terrible. bad, yeah. but, like, all the musical components of double D's just seem, like, crazed. And there's too many of them. All right, if you guys are both double D's, then I'm I'm so split on this, so I'll just, we, I say we move double D's. Let's move them. Let's move them. Let's move them. Final four. Great bracket. We're definitely going to do Worst Songs 3, by the way, so comment some songs that we missed. First matchup, we've got Life Goes On versus Game Over. Game Over. Yeah, we yeah. already talked about it from before. Yeah. Uh, there's no suspense needed. Nope. Yeah. Game Over is worse. Now. Oh, here we go. Oh, man. We got two club bangers here. We got Pop Champagne by Jim Jones, and we've got Double D's by the Black Eyed Peas. I think it's Double D's handedly. I think it's pop champagne. I am on the fence here because I think that pop champagne sounds worse, but I think that double D's is worse. I think the intention with the double D's song is gross and it also ends up sounding bad. And I think the intention with the Jim Jones song is fine. Yeah, it's like harmless. But it tried to be a good song and failed horribly. It did chart. So it did kind of succeed. It, being a it succeeded. Successful song. Ugh. Which is crazy. Yeah, I think it's the double of double D's that makes it worse. Yeah, hey, double D's to the final. All right, I'm gonna put a poll up in the chat so that our chat can vote. Game over or double D's, this is the final one. If you're watching this not live, pause and listen to both mm -hmm. all the way through. Yeah. We put Please. ourselves through all of these songs. Yeah. Yeah. The Make least you can so do happy. Yeah. is listen to the final. I think for this finals, we should do it to where we talk about it and then we have a countdown to say. Okay, so on three, we say what we think is yeah. the worst song. Yeah. So we'll break it down one more time. Is is this the worst falling in reverse song in your opinion? That is so hard because this entire album is horrendous, but I think that this is honestly like a symbolic centerpiece of just the failure of falling in reverse. If it's not the worst, it's tied for the worst. I, th I think that it's truly atrocious. And then Double D's, it doesn't even feel like Black Eyed Peas made this song. Like it, it yeah. does, but like what they are now is they're like app developers or something. Yeah. It's not really like they're like a, <laughs> a band, you know? All right, you ready to do the countdown? So we're going to count down three, two, one, mm -hmm. and we're going to gonna all say what the worst song is and the majority will win three two one 
Game, game over. over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, oh, right. Yeah. It is unanimous. Game over by falling in reverse <laughs> Shit, is man. the worst song oh. on this bracket. <laughs> That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Playing with you. Let us know if you think we got it right, got it wrong. Which song is your least favorite here? Which song is your favorite? Any songs you're mad about even being on here? Mm -hmm. And we'd like to thank our very special guest, Brad Tasting Music. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. It was Everybody, a pleasure. subscribe to Brad Taste in Music. Everything will be linked in the description. Anything else you'd like to say? Shout out Flex Gang, Stream Big Dizzle, Stream Big Baller B. You know, send me money, and there you go. That's it. <laughs> Other than that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, all the stuff I said at the beginning. And great, would you like to leave these wonderful people with some advice to leave your their lives by? The soul becomes dyed with the colors of thoughts. <laughs> all right, this has been I Mind TV. We love you, appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs>Started my crypto scam. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's super relatable. I feel like Brad Token. Yeah, I got to promote it here. Go ahead. Gotta Go get... ahead. No, we love crypto. You got to get Brad Token in now. It usually goes up when I say something, you know, pro LGBT, you know, and it goes down usually when I say something really, you know, awful. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, know, you got to keep. You got to keep an eye on. Speaking of Brad Token, that would be a crazy link up, right? You and Token. Oh shoot. <laughs> and the trumpets, they go. Are you old enough to have had an emo phase? You know, I am old enough, but uh, no. I, people thought I was emo for a while. Yeah. Yeah, because I think they really wanted me to be, but uh, <laughs> that's not how that works. They were begging yeah. you to be yeah. emo? Because your biggest video is like the My Chemical Romance thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone saw this. Like, oh my God, we just watched someone become emo. I was like, no. No, I'm good. That's not how that works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meet me at the altar in your white dress. Today's hey, sponsor is my new personal circumcision service. You did a great job on me. I didn't even get started yet, though, so. You were down there for so long. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I wrote a rap about it. You want to hear it? No. I'll be circumcising, sizing you up. When you come to my doctor's office, I start licking you up, grabbing you by the nuts. I carry you up. Uh, I guess something, something staring you up. That was great. Yeah, thank thanks. you. Thank thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was really good. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, thank you. Hey, you move ain't fair, you know. Shout out to Barbie movie.